anybody's here right now. I am trying to pull up the chat, but I'm not even seeing my live stream. See what the issue is. There we go. Okay, let's see, that's not working right now. Hey, yes, it is me, Counter Strike 2. <laughs> okay. see here I just gotta get the chat fixed up there we go Yes, I'm never going to live this down, am I? I will be Counter-Strike 2 for as long as necessary. Okay, well, let me just get a friend in here. Okay, let me, how's this, is that better? Uh, okay, perfect. Well done. Hello. How are you, What's Jason? Up? Oh, great. I'm just, I'm doing, I'm doing great. It's been so long since we spoke to each other. Oh, yes. We did not speak to each other earlier today. That's Especially true. not about RE4. Nope. Nope. Didn't happen. Nobody can prove it. Except I can. All right. I'm going to turn my voice up here. <clears throat> so, um... Let me just fix up a few other things here real quick. You know what's kind of crazy? What up? I went like the first 30 years of my life without ever having like any part of a toilet break on me. Yeah. And then uh, in the last week, the little like flush lever on 
two of our bathrooms is broken. Oh no, I hate when that. It's just like, it's just crazy that it would happen like twice in a week after not happening ever. Well, I think that just goes to show, uh, get a better toilet. Yeah, yeah, that's the problem. <clears throat> Did you make yourself a little a little lunch before you started streaming? Yep, Kelly and I had some leftover pizza. Nice. I had some honey barbecue chicken tendies that I got Ooh. on clearance. And I think I understand why they were on clearance. <laughs> they were, they were... Your, your YouTube name is still... Kind I know. Of I can't change it. I can't change it for like another week. It's it's uh, it sucks. That's terrible. Yeah, it's I, I'm not a fan, but it is what it is. Okay. Let's start a new game here, and then uh, I'll have a chat just making sure everything sounds good as we're going through. So we're going to new game, custom. Uh, the difficulty is extreme. We're going to load a preset. We're going to do extreme plus permadeath. So we're going to see just how fun this is going to be. I don't know any of this Counter-Strike stuff, guys. I don't play Counter-Strike. You just have to show off the uh, the smoke physics in the game because that's, like, the big deal about <clears throat> Counter-Strike 2. Oh, okay. I am honestly, like, I really I really just want to give you a shout-out for, like, getting off of the crypto train so fast. Like, oh, you, thank you. You realized, you realized that realized things were going really... sideways and <laughs> <laughs> you got right out of there. Uh... Yes, so this is Counter Strike Two. We're playing Counter Strike Two right now, with the Counter Strike Two dev, Jason. That's me. Yeah. I made Counter Strike. He did, and Valve stole it from him. Yeah, and you would think that that kind of espionage had only happened once, but then Capcom stole all of my ideas from Cultic for the Resident Evil Four remake. So it yep. just happened twice. <laughs> oh my God! Just all these. Counter Strike comments. <laughs> uh, oh, that's great. Wait, so when? How long is it till you can reset? I think your, like uh... end of the end of next week. I can change it back. Oh, nice. That's good, man. That yeah, that sucked. I, I'm glad you're able to get your account back so fast. I know sometimes YouTube can be a real a real drag about that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, I know. Well, I I'm I'm very fortunate that um. Uh, I had so much support from a lot of people, uh, and I think that's part of the reason why I got it back so quickly. Okay, so I might move, have to move the chat. Uh, oh gosh, I'm trying to think of like a good spot to put it in. That might be a good one. Oh, since the heads up display is down on the bottom left? Yeah, oh shit. Maybe uh, I don't know how wide the chat is, but the middle, the middle bottom of the screen, I think, stays pretty empty most of the time. That's true. Uh, you know, but, I'm gonna and do... top left is just pickup notifications, so that wouldn't be bad either. I feel like top right's going to be too. Uh, we'll do it. Uh, yeah, there we go, up at the top. We'll do that for right now. Hey, you can turn off the in-game frame counter if you want to get it out of the way. Oh, yeah, I know. I, I, um, I, was, I forgot I had that enabled. Uh, that's what under video. Uh, it's under options gameplay, I think. Uh, yep. Okay. What do you got the old ambient light set to? It should a be nice about fifty. Moody, like sixty-five. Oh, nice. Video ambient light. Yep, fifty. Nice, nice and spooky. Hmm. I feel like I'm not hearing the game too well. Let me just do up the sound volume. Uh, and if anybody uh, needs me to make any adjustments, uh, this game is Cultic, Vlad. Um, yeah, if anybody needs me to make any adjustments, just let me know. So I'm just going to I do that. We're going to come up here. Have you ever watched me play Cultic before, Jason? Uh, outside of, like, the demo video I did? Ah, uh, you know, I don't think I have. Okay. Well, um, prepare to uh, yell at me for playing your game the unattended way, maybe. <laughs> well, I think this is the first time I've ever watched somebody play Extreme Plus, so good luck. 
Got to get the lever action there. The sweet, sweet mirror's leg. I say Cultic's like the one game I don't really use a lot of custom binds for. I, I really like the, the weapon wheel. Yeah, I get um <clears throat> and it was like you can use you can use hotkeys, you can use the weapon wheel, and you can also like use the mouse scroll wheel. There's a lot like a lot of different ways to select weapons to appease all of the people who have different preferences, but um I still get like suggestions of like like, could you add this as a as a way to access weapons? I'm like, no, li no. There's like already three different ways to access your weapon. <laughs> just, please, just use one of them. I don't want to add any more. I really hope more games adopt the um, uh, like Coldplay's not the first game to do it, but um, the weapon wheel isn't like you don't like spin the cursor with your oh, mouse. Cool. It's just like you just like highlight the weapon you want. And it's like, I've always felt that weapon wheels with the mouse where you have to like rotate the weapon wheel are always feel really awkward. Yeah, no, I, I think that's why um, I prefer just using the weapon wheel is because it's just, you just you just move your mouse to the location and there you go. Yeah, I call it, I call it a flick wheel. Oh I don't shit, know oh my like God. Actual, I don't know if that's like an actual term or not, but um, Half-Life Alex was the first game that I played that I really was like, oh, that's cool. Um, but in Half-Life Alex, you just like move your wrist a tiny bit to select each weapon, which is really nice. Once mm -hmm. you get like the feel for it, you can swap stuff really easy. All right, uh, I got super fucked up there. Watch me miss all my shots. Now, let's see, it's green plus. So what are those? What are those pistol shots doing? Thirty damage each, I think. If you don't have armor. Why are we just getting all these fucking... Oh, and of course I missed the next one. And that one. The tomahawk throw has got to be one of my favorite things. Oh yeah, and it's uh, the headshot zone for uh, axe hits has been expanded in this update. So oh. it should be easier to nail headshots. Nice. It used to be like you kind of had to hit like the top half of their head. Um, and now it's been... Uh, it's expanded more so you can hit them like closer to like the bottom of their neck and it'll still count. Mm, which is okay. how it should have been originally. But... It was actually a really easy change. I just, uh, <laughs> whenever the whenever the hatchet hits somebody, it uh, when it like sends a message to that enemy telling them that they were hit, it misreports the position of the hit as being like, like a foot higher than it actually is. It's like a super super cheap way to fix it. Hmm. Because it doesn't matter if I mean, the axe can't hit oh, too high because the top of the head is the top of the hitbox. So. Bro, I'm just missing everything today. And I will catch up on chat here in just a moment. Oh, fuck you. There we go. Line that up nice and easy. There we go. All right, let's see. Pulse to bring damage weapon wheels. Good IMO. It's kind of like here, but slower. Um, I know the name change. I, I, I can't change my name back for a while, unfortunately. So I'm going to be Counter-Strike 2 for at least the next week. Let's watch this shit blow up. Yeah, look at that. It's crazy that out of like all of the stuff YouTube was able to do to help you recover your account, they couldn't change your name back. Well, and I've also got a warning on my account now, so um, because they had to remove the uh, um, the stream or whatever that the hacker had put up on my account. Oh, yeah. And, probably, um, cause some, probably because people reported it. I reported it, I know. <laughs> Because it was literally just, like, super scuzzy crypto-like stuff. It was not good. Yeah, no, it was it was not good at all. I'm glad people reported it. Um, I would rather um, have gone down that route than to just let it sit for a while. Because I think the mass reports kind of also led into me getting my account back a lot quicker. Yeah. Yeah, I have to imagine if there's just, like, giant influx of reports on an account suddenly that... Uh... That looks pretty, pretty fishy. Looks a little sus. So if anybody's wondering what I'm doing uh, as I'm kicking the air, it's a nice little mechanic called kick boosting. And it makes you go fast. And I love it. I use it habitually now. The worst part is when you start trying to use it in other games. Mm -hmm. It's definitely not a thing. Yeah, I, um, 
I, I got like so used to it. Um, depends on like the game because like Ultra Kill, that's just like ingrained in my in my memory. Um, mm -hmm. But like other games that are kind of like similar, ah, oh, that motherfucker. Um, that are somewhat similar um, in like like style, I guess is uh, what I'm gonna say. Um, yeah, I'm like, oh, cool. I'm just gonna kick boot. Like I actually like played Blood. Uh, after playing some cultic a while back and i was like trying to kick boost and i was like wait this is blood <laughs> yeah going going back and forth from <clears throat> blood and cultic always messes me up with just the tnt mechanics because mm. <clears throat> they're similar but like just different enough that if you're in um if you've got like the muscle memory for one or the other it's a little bit of a little yep. bit of an adjustment Speaking of TNT, I need to do the uh, tossing the TNT out more often. Whoop. Quick toss. Yeah. I don't use it a whole lot because um, when I do, I, I do it kind of low and I take a lot of self damage from it. So I know I gotta like aim higher and a little further. Uh, one thing that was fixed um, a while back is the uh, the shotguns pellets now properly um, penetrate targets, so you can quick toss dynamite into a crowd and just shoot it with a shotgun, and you, you have a pretty good chance of touching it off just because of all the pellets and the fact that it'll punch through the first person in the crowd. All right. Woo. Which was always intended, but apparently the launch version shotgun penetration was just busted, and I didn't notice. Let's see if I can get, uh, there we go, okay. Kicking stuff in video games with your feet uh, is really rare. Seeing a mechanic that actually boosts you when you do it is cool. Yes, it is. Hello, hello. I am I am the living Counter-Strike too, yes. Oh shit. Eyeball. Goodbye, Sten Cultist. I think I'm going to buy Crab Champions. What the hell is Crab Champions? I, I don't know. It's some, like, co-op roguelite game that was added on April 1st. Huh. It's like, a, it's like Risk of Rain, but with crabs. It looks mm. like... And it's cheaper than buying actual crab. So. I mean, I don't doubt it. I don't eat crab because I have an allergy. <laughs> nice. Well, if you would just, if you eat like smaller amounts of crab, you can build up an immunity to it. I don't think that actually works. Oh, no. <laughs> I've given so many people bad advice. <laughs> yeah, I remember uh, hearing that. I, I don't remember from who. I think it was a. Um... Oh gosh, I, I think it was from like some doctor. It might have been from a video, and they were like, "Yeah, uh, that actually might just make your allergies worse." <laughs> but I, I, I wouldn't. I don't know. That would that would be something you'd have to actually talk to like a doctor about. Let's see. Have I played RoboQuest? I have not played it. Risk of Rain with crabs. What do you call gaming with my mother? <gasps> How dare you! I, I, I sound like an older wait is that are you talking about me or Jason it sounds like an older more depressed Germa <laughs> and I'm not sure if I should be insulted or laughing man I can't believe I played through this game like the first time with uh, the without the color correction uh, on oh <laughs> Uh, it's it's fine. Some people just aren't into the palette, and that's okay. I I love there. it now. There but the go. original demo was also like extremely dark, so like it was a lot harder to pick enemies out against the background. So I I understand. What kills me is when there's like when I see like video reviews that people do that play it without and it's just like they'll like play it with the brightness all the way up and the palette turned off and i'm like oh god it looks so bad <laughs> <laughs> this isn't your intended vision i know <laughs> it's terrible oh my god 
my god, there's two Sten Cultists down there? Jesus. You should have played with the randomizer turned on, too. Oh. Maybe next time. Maybe next time. Could've, could've just been fighting the Harvesters left and right. Oh, my god. Rip. Ha, back to the beginning. Let's go. <laughs> Ooh, that was rough. Right at the end there. Uh, this thing's oh, I forgot you're playing. I forgot you're playing permadeath. Yep. Oof. Skipping the cutscene now. I died. I don't want to see this piece of work actually, that you work so hard on. I completely forgot that the game like fades to black if you die on permadeath because I don't play permadeath at all. I was kind of like, what's going? Oh, okay. <laughs> I just added that really quickly one afternoon before the random or before the uh, custom difficulty update came out and i didn't really play with it much because yeah, permadeath and me don't get along it's st too stressful um you know i kind of forgot i had it enabled honestly i was like yeah this is going well i forgot i need to play carefully you can always adjust the custom difficulty if you don't want to keep replaying the first map over and over no no I'm a sweaty gamer. I gotta sweat. <laughs> oh man, yeah, I really, I really want to do a, I really want to do like a an S plus run on the RE4 remake, but I, I just feel like I would be too stressed out with the save game limitation, and I don't think I would even really use the hand cannon at all. So maybe it's just not worth it. Um, you don't want those cat ears, dude. <laughs> the infinite ammo cat ears. Oh, 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 I didn't. The infinite ammo was just a bonus. I would have been down for cat ears regardless. <laughs> I thought, uh, I thought the wolf tail was like surely just a mod when I saw it first. I was like, and then it's like an actual in game thing. I was like, oh, okay, that's, that's something. Mm hmm. Nothing like nothing against it. It's just like. I'm, I'm so used to seeing wacky stuff like that as mods that when it was like an actual in-game cosmetic, I was like, oh, how about Oh, that's that? interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I, I agree. It's, um, well, uh, seeing all the cosmetics, I was like, oh, so this is like Dead Rising rules almost. Oh, man. I have like, I have like crazy nostalgia for Dead Rising 1 because it was like the reason that I got an Xbox 360. It was just like, at the time... Uh, at the time that like Dead Rising and the 360 came out, I didn't. I was. I was. I think I had like. I think we had. A, I think we maybe had a. Just a PS2 at that point. I don't think we'd even gotten a Wii yet. Oh wow. And uh, well, yeah, because the Wii came out after the 360, um, right? I think. Uh, I think so. Yeah, because everybody is like comparing up now. the consoles of the time to each other and. 360 launched in 2005. God, I'm old. Jeez oh wow. Christ. Jeez, same year as the X. Uh, same year as the X. Same year as uh, RE4. Oh yeah, and, the, and then the Wii came out a year later. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So anyway, so I didn't. Oh have... my god. The cultists just fucking have... gibbed each other like two of them in a row. <laughs> they were standing in a line. They just blew each other's heads off. Um. Yeah. So we just had a PS2, and I hadn't really seen anything about the 360 yet. Um, and I went to my went over to my cousin's and he was playing Dead Rising and it was just like, a I mean like the in, the graphical fidelity increase was bonkers but b it was like there were like so many zombies on yeah screen, and, it was and crazy he was like, and he was like cutting them in half with like a sword and I was like whoa what is happening yeah I know dude uh, yeah, dude Dead Rising it's such a good game I I love it so that was that was the first game I got when I got a 360 yeah. And, nice. Uh, I have like crazy nostalgia for it for that reason, but I just every time I try to replay it, I like I wind up rage quitting because of the survivor AI. Like the the escort AI is just so bad. Oh yeah, it's it's really bad. Oh, I don't have any more ammo for my lever action because I missed like four shots in a row. But at some point, as a younger person with more free time, I must have uh, I must have stomached it because I think I unlocked everything in the game except for the the zero saber because I wasn't gonna play the endless mode for that long that's ridiculous oh i thought it was the um the mega buster mega buster was uh killing fifty three thousand, however many zombies. oh yeah fifty three thousand five hundred ninety three. yeah whatever the the population of uh willamette, uh, willamette was and i just did that by like driving up and down the the uh parking garage area yeah oh yeah the uh, yeah the the farming tactic Man, yeah, good game. That's like the, 
the just like the mall theme. It just like plays on repeat in my head the most often. Mm -hmm. do, 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 do. That jazzy one, and then there. Do, yeah. do, 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 yeah, that do, one. Do, do, do. Dead Rising is indeed the spice. The saber was five days in infinite mode, huh? Uh, we should co-op Dead Rising too. Sometime. Ooh, That's I would love that. Um, how am I doing tonight? I'm doing. Uh, I'm doing pretty good. Just getting back into the oh god, groove of uh, gaming a little bit. Trying to get some uh, relaxation time uh, between uh, getting stuff finalized for the wedding and uh, um, graduating, and then finding a job. <laughs> oh, did did you already did you tell your stream that we're getting married? I thought oh, I thought that was kind of a secret. Oh oh no yeah so Jason and I are getting married hey. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till I tell my fiance. <laughs> I I too have some bad news to break to my fiance. <laughs> uh, are we inviting them to the wedding? Uh, well, <laughs> my fiance's uh, her her folks are kind of paying for it, so <laughs> probably be rude not to. Invite them. <laughs> uh, cultic strike two. Uh, but for real, who are they? Uh, I didn't know they had America's 40th president as one of the playtesters for CS2. What? Are you looking up the 40th president? Uh, no, I'm, the 40th was like um, Clinton or Bush, wasn't it? Hey, you're the, you're the college educated guy, not me. Don't ask me. Well, uh, you live in the United States of America, so you should know. That's true, but I also live in Kansas, so I feel like my expectations for education should be a little bit lower. <laughs> well, you know, that's fair. I understand that. Gotta use those throwables a lot more. They're very good. Free Molotovs. Thank you. Oh my god, that guy just would not die. Did you try hitting him? I did, multiple times. Oh, wow, okay. I'm the, o I'm the only gamer who actually has a life. Well, thank you. But as, uh, as you can see, uh, uh, Jason is also going to be married in the nearish future. Uh, when's your guys? Uh, I mean, I hope you don't mind me discussing this, uh, but uh, in the in the fall. In the fall, that's in right. October. Yeah. Which, because we're in Kansas, means that I have literally no idea what to expect weather-wise. It was like last year we went to a wedding on like September 29th, and it was like 98 degrees and super humid out and pretty disgusting. And then a week later, it snowed, and our that's kind of when we're planning on having ours. So it's like, well, I guess we'll see what happens. You know, start, just like obsessively checking the, the weather a month out. Yeah, I know. Uh, Kelly and I have been like watching the weather uh, for our wedding date, and it's like it's been storming here so much recently. Yeah. Does your do your guys have an indoor option if the weather winds up? Uh, yeah, we do. Like our, our uh, luckily we we plan for like everything to be indoors. It's just at least for the photos. Um, uh, you yeah. know, because it, it, in Michigan it can be one of two ways. It's like you're either. Um, kind of like where you guys are it's it's you know it, it could be snowing like downpour or it could be like 85 degrees see my experience in michigan was that it just rained all the time it just like never stopped raining I remember being very very dreary when you get those like lake effect systems that come through and just like drizzle on you for a month at a time um we don't live too close to like um the Great Lakes, at least not close enough to where, like, the weather, like, affects oh, gotcha. us very heavily. Um, even if you're living uh, in, like, Detroit, like, right on the river there, um, that's not, like, um, it, it, it can get cold, but. Yeah, we were, I was living in, I was in Kalamazoo, so it was basically just, like, just rain all summer and snow all winter. It's crazy just getting used to there being like six inches of snow on the ground at literally any given time. Oh yeah. 
Thank God I got out of there. Now I'm back in Kansas where it, we just get ice storms constantly throughout the winter. Doesn't help that uh, climate change is certainly making an impact on our weather patterns. Yup, it was, uh, I think I told you, it was like 88 here two days ago and then it was freezing yesterday. Yep. And then, it, and then it's back up to like 60 something today. I don't know exactly how warm because I'm in the basement where I usually spend my time. <laughs> Uh, the axe, the axes are not infinite. You have up to ten you can hold, and I just don't throw them a whole lot. And usually, if I do, um, there's a bunch of enemies that drop axes. So yeah, and um, I can't, uh, I can't change my name unfortunately for a little while. For who asked? And yes, this game we are playing is Cultic. It is not Counter Strike Two. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's so good. Oh, I didn't know that throwing a hand at a cultist would jib them too, or kill them. Yeah, physics objects in general just like do a ridiculous amount of damage, and I should really at some point clamp it and make it more consistent. But it's just like they they have like a each physics object has like a base damage amount, and then it has like a, a velocity multiplier on it. Ah, uh, okay. Um, and so it's like they might not do much damage. In most situations, but if you like really throw it at somebody and hit them like at max speed, then it, oof, it can get pretty crazy. Ooh. There we go. Oh, I forgot there's a Sten guy up there on, on extreme. I, uh, perfect, I got these two. These these two have thrown me off in the past. It's very good that I know, like, at least pretty much where all the enemy placements are. Ooh, good, that hit. Damn. I gotta say, the, the, the pistol cultists are just, they're so deadly. They hurt so much. They are turds. Man, just wait until wait until you have to deal with the revolver cultists in chapter two. Man, that's gonna be no oh. one's gonna like them. I'm guessing they're gonna hit like a fucking truck. Yep. Well plus I have to add the uh I have to add my red lantern enemy since uh <laughs> since since, <laughs> since since uh Dylan agreed to do one too. Oh really? Yeah. Oh that's fucking <laughs> hilarious. Yeah. He made. He was making a post, or I don't know if he made a post complaining about him, or if it was on like one of our posts complaining about it. But I was like, if you add a red, a red cultist, or a red lantern enemy to, to Gloomwood, I'll add one to Cultic. Oh my God, that's that's amazing. Oh. All right. There we go. Look at this. What's what's wow? This tent looks different than the others. I wonder what happens when I examine it 50 times. Uh, you only have to examine it 45 times. Ah, uh, damn. Very much. Damn, I already skipped it. Well, everybody go examine that tent 45 times. I'm debating what uh, upgrade I want to go with first. Oh, it's always shotgun choke. Shotgun choke is too good. I really enjoy the... Um, the uh, the extra kick um, for uh, boosts and stuff like that. That's 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 my favorite. Uh, yes. Uh, for the people that are asking again, I can't change my name at least for a little while. Whoever hacked my account changed my name twice, so it's gonna be another week or so. Okay. Time for my favorite combination in this game is the. Um, TNT Molotov combo, which I just fucked that throw up so bad. There we go. Okay. Oh shit, there's a Sten Cultist up there. I forgot about that. Yep. Oh! Ha! 
Hello, hello. Um, so Jason, somebody is asking uh, when they when they can expect chapter two. They need more cultic in their life. Oh man, I don't know. <laughs> it's taken forever. This week is there. This this year has just gone completely off the rails. Had like back to back like health scares at the beginning of the year, and then we're like still trying to move and plan for a wedding. We had a death in the family, so it's just like I have. And then I'm also doing like some side work stuff for 3D Realms, so I just have had way too much going on. But, yeah, of course. Uh, I would hope I would hope to have some significant progress on it, probably by the end of the year, maybe maybe early next year. Well, I'm kind of working on a, uh, working on some some other stuff on the side too. So it's not to, I'm not not quite like burning myself out like I was last year trying to get the game done. Do, mm -hmm. Working at a little bit more of a relaxed pace this time around. Yeah, good. Yeah, and we, we, we're all we can all be patient. So no worries, dude. I can't. I'm ready for the game to be done. Someone <laughs> needs to finish it for me. Okay, yeah, with the with the ambient light down to fifty, this is so much darker. I'm like, <laughs> I'm a little bit freaked out to fight the Mister Harvester. It's good you brought the lantern with you, though. That's like, there's a, like in the in the forest in the third map, there's like a really bright lantern right at the beginning of the map that no one ever takes with them. It's so nice to just set it down and then shoot all the infected. Oh, this is like actually terrifying. Yeah, especially when you have to restart if you die. Uh oh my god. Oh god, it's, it's so dark. It's so dark. Oh god, he's so close to me. Oh god, where is he? Where the fuck? Dude. Oh, he's... He's so... Oh shit. Ah! Oh my god, the bear trap. The bear trap almost got me. Uh, where is he? Oh my god, dude. Holy shit. <laughs> okay, that was, that was like legitimately terrifying. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's cool just seeing the bear traps come flying out of the dark at you. Oh my god. I'm like, I'm actually a little bit scared because that was, I was like, no, I made it this far. I can't die now. This is kind of a cool thing. Um... Uh, kind of a cool thing with chapter two with the new weapon the two uh the two new weapons that i'm working on right now um are both basically variants of existing weapons that you can use with one hand so like a one-handed shotgun variant oh uh, nice and uh, so you'll have a little bit more versatility when you're stuck in one-handed situations like we all find ourselves in sometimes <laughs> oh boy waterfall Motherfucker. I can't believe the stash is not behind the waterfall. Yeah, what a terrible level designer. Yeah, can't believe it. Okay, uh, this is going to be a uh, fun, tough spot. What am I doing on kills? I just need a couple more. You doing a hundred percent run too? I'm Are gonna try 100%? to. One hundred percent. At least a hundred, a hundred percent kills. Except I am missing something, and I don't know where it is. Oh man, I uh, I hooked up my my quest this morning because I'm have a little hankering for RE4 VR. Ooh, I was playing it the other day, and it's 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 still great. It's still just amazing. I hope I didn't miss one of the, uh, what are they called? The, um, the harvested. Oh, yeah, usually whenever I'm missing a, missing a kill on this map, it's usually one of those boogers. I might as well just do a thorough check. Yeah, okay, no, it's, it's not going to be over the only, here. It's really, it's, uh... Playing playing RE4 vanilla now with uh I've, I'm so used to the randomizer that vanilla just seems like a breeze. That's like I go to do the Pueblo and I'm like at this point I'm used to everybody being chainsaw people and there's only one. 
because like every time I play the Pueblo, I always get like either all Chainsaw Sisters or like all Island guys, and either way is yeah, like, dude. Rough. The last few times I ran through the randomizer, um, it's just been Island guys uh, at the Pueblo. So Island guys for the cabin fight sucks. That's so rough. Oh, the at the villa too. Yeah, at the villa too. I've been getting nothing but um, Island guys, and they and they the let this most recent time they're all crossbow and dynamite guys. So it it. I think only maybe like three of them got into the building by the <laughs> time it ended. Outside. They they just because like they took forever to move inside and Luis was like holding down one side. I was holding down the other. And um, if they started to break in, you just shoot the dynamite guy and, you know, everybody around yeah. him dies because they just clump up. A friend of mine had like all RPG guys and they would just stand outside and shoot at the side of the building <laughs> the entire that, time. That would so suck. Just... It was just like it's like nobody came in, but you're just like stun locked for the entire fight from all the explosions. Mm -hmm. Um, and don't you need like forty kills in order for that fight to end, mm. or something like that? I think yeah, you... it's it's some number, but I don't know. Uh, I don't know exactly what it is. Uh, forty seems a little high. The sniper, the sniper rifle isn't in the first level. Is it? Uh, no. Not, not anymore. It was in the demo. Oh, yeah, in the demo. Anymore. Oh, right. I should probably take out the... Now, let's see. Um... Man, the sucky thing is, like, it's it's already, like, getting kind of hard to look up stuff from the original RE4, because if you, like, just the algorithm means if you look up anything RE4, it's, like, all remake stuff. Mm-hmm. I know you got to, like, specify RE405. Uh, let's see. Hello, hello. Thank you for joining. Um, yeah, there's no uh, no missing enemy here. Interesting. Use the debug menu to nuke everybody on the map. <laughs> Just That's... to say you did it. <laughs> huh. Wouldn't that be shitty if I, like, just walked out and, like, got fucking nuked by, like, a pistol cultist <laughs> and just had to restart again? Yeah, the scary thing is, at this point, the uh, the cultists have a, uh, a default dance sprite in the game files now because <laughs> I made it for that stupid, uh, that stupid makeshift video. That's so good. <laughs> that that should be like a random chance like every <laughs> like one in every 1000 times that you die it'll just it doesn't even like show a kill cam it's just the cultist that kill you just does it you just hear that stupid like default dance jingle in the background <laughs> oh my god all right well i guess i'm missing a kill because uh, i don't want to spend a million years on this so i've already lost lost the challenge in one way Yeah, I'm trying to think where the last person could be. Sometimes they fall down in the water in the the water room and splash around in there. Yeah, I passed through there. I didn't see anybody. So, I, you know, it is what it is. Enemies can't drown. So every now and again, like, an enemy will get, like, hit with a physics object and get pushed in there. But because they're not awake, they just, like, stand at the bottom of the water <laughs> and just chill out. <laughs> the, the, the parasites made them immune to uh, drowning. I think the only enemy that can drown is the the harvested, since they can't like realistically swim. If they fall on water, they just like play this like struggle animation, and then eventually they die. Oh, I've never noticed that. That's pretty neat. Because you haven't been mean enough to kick a harvested into the water. <laughs> well, at the uh, at the the um mines in the mines, I'll I'll do that. Um, Koro, did you know that cultic is only ten dollars? So it is very affordable. I highly recommend it. What a deal. It. What a what deal. deal. Alright, well we made it to the second level, so there we go. Gotta snipe these guys whenever you can, because they will fuck you up. One one pistol just took me down a nice nice little chunk. Actually, we'll do Molotov here. Like what? Huh. That's weird. I was there we gonna, go. 
I just noticed that I wasn't subscribed to you anymore. Did you lose subscribers when your account got messed up? Yeah, a lot of people um, uh, unsubscribed. I'm sure they were like, who's this? And they, they just unsubscribed from it. So I, um, did, I did not unsubscribe, but it's treating me like I'm not subscribed. Well, I am now. Well, thank you. I can't believe the cultic dev has subscribed to my channel. There we go. All right. Weapon upgrades. Let's take a look, baby. The buckshot, the barrel choke, the packed shells. Um. Oh yeah, of course. If you're low on money, yeah. Yeah, you know it's you know it's cheaper than ten dollars. Um. Free gay sex. That's true. <laughs> Got you there, boyo. That's true. It's always nice when it's free. <laughs> oh, is that is that in the chat? A gamble. Ooh, yeah, I'm going to get the, the time the time uh, slowdown thing on the alt fire. That's that's my favorite. Oh, dead eye. So good, dude. All right, this part's so dangerous coming coming into the the water off the boats. I always try to shotgun the uh, stand guy there as I drop down. Just like right, like in the two frames that you fall past them, just like blow them away. I just sniped them from uh, from up here. Okay. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh shit. I forgot there was a second one. Oh. Oh god. Oh my god. I've got nine health left. Oh, this sucks. Use the field kit. I used it. Oh no. Oh fuck. Okay, well, I'm oh gonna... yeah, and, it, and it's extreme, so you don't get health regen. Forgot about that. Ooh, okay, well, they're stuck in the water right now, it seems, so... I think the shotgun cultist just blew himself up. So, I'm gonna have to make a run over there, hope there's some health. Oh, okay, alright. A little bit, a little bit. Yeah, your uh, your your chances of getting a health drop are a decent bit higher if you're low on health. So, if you can like if you like blow up a big crowd of enemies when you're at like 20 health, you get a really good chance for those health drops. Where'd he go? I'm gonna, I'm gonna like drop into the water, and he's and just gonna. Drop. He's like under the boat, I think. If only the dev had added in drowning to the enemies. You would be in much better shape. And the shitty part is, is like that one, the pistol cultist, he dropped some health. Uh... Ficorax, uh, uh, you know, I'm doing good, you know, things are a little, uh, stressful at the moment, but I'm glad I get to, um, take some time out of my day to, uh, play some video games and chat with some friends. Oh man, I, I don't even think I should risk it, at least not right now, I could always come back. But what about the biscuit? What about the biscuit? Alright, I'm gonna... Say goodbye to him. Oh, that was a pistol cultist guy right there. Oh, that hurt. Okay, got him. Oh my god. I'm aching. Two health. Two HP, not a lot of HP. Nope. I can get dropped so easily. 
trying to remember where all the health pickups are. Oh man, if you thought the harvester cave was dark, wait till you get to below deck in the cargo ship. Oh no. Oh Jesus, okay. No, 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 no. Oh. oh my god, dude. He threw dynamite right at me. Jesus. No health. There we go. Okay, we're 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 getting somewhere. Did you grab that secret area up there? I think it's got some armor in it. Oh shit! Ah, damn it. Uh, uh. Okay, cool. I can't kick boost myself out of there. All right, armor's good. can't shoot through this glass, can you? Oh, you can. Well, that, that could have ended poorly. Oh, well, will they, will they open the door? Nah, you're too smart. Cultists can't unlock doors. Maybe they just don't want to. Maybe they feel like they're safer in there. <laughs> oh, the harvester. Okay, let's hope I don't... Oh, yeah, there's some health in here. Perfect. That was a good... Uh... That was a good uh, Zandronum multiplayer taunt chuckle there you did. A little. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, they're just blowing themselves up. There we go. All right. Okay, we're looking good. We're looking real good. Okay. Head below deck, or not quite below. Ah! This is the most health you've had in ages. You must be feeling, must be feeling great right now. I, I'm feeling fantastic. This can't be good for me, but I feel great. Man, I'm so sad. I'm, I'm like, I'm finally like a little bit burned out on RE4 remake. Uh, yeah, me too. But like. Man, that was... I, I don't think I've, like, played a game so relentlessly since, like, Elden Ring came out. Usually usually games don't really hold my attention for very long. Cause I the, feel the, you the on stress that. Of, the stress of adulthood and things that I need to be working on usually gets the better of me. But, man, that, that game really just grabbed me by the balls, and that was a good time. It was, and it, it was fantastic. I, I, I'm also a little burnt out on it just because of doing, like hardcore and then two professional runs yeah a little hand on the tv okay yeah it's uh, it's dark in here ouch Oh shit. Wow, it is so dark. That's 10 guys trying to light it up for you. Oh, well, I should go back and thank him. Oh my god, yeah, you really can't see. go damn wow yeah the ambient lighting it, it really wow i like that i like that a lot very moody bold strategy let's see it plays out while i we're less than 50 people in chat people who kind of don't care about each other but it still feels very small and secure and the streamer is usually interacting yeah i try, I try to interact a little more often I do like comfy little streams.
Hurry before it hits me. Damn it. Uh, damn, that, that, that hurts so bad. All right, any, any health pickups that I might have missed in here? I guess not. Sad day. Oh, I already did that. Okay. Awesome. Okay, time to head up to the top deck. And I think they all wiped each other out. I'm not quite sure. Oh, huh. Interesting. No! <laughs> oh, bruh. Nice, they all killed each other. That was nice of them, honestly. I, 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 but I couldn't, I couldn't come in here and do the sick, uh, um, dead eye thing with the the uh, lever yeah. action. It is one of, it is one of the best rooms to clear with dead eye. All right, let's. Uh... Go. Going after some soggy weapon parts. Mm. Oh, you didn't have to say it like that. It would have cost you zero dollars to have not said it like that. <laughs> mm, soggy weapon parts. Oh yeah. Oh man, I go get some get some water. I'm trying to hydrate. Oh, you know what? That's a good idea. Hydration time. I'm out of ice and my ice maker's busted, so I'm just like trying to keep bottles of water in the fridge so they stay Rip. cold. I see the Sten cultist all the way back there. Oh, cool, got him. Okay, perfect. Now I can go back and get some handgun ammo. There we go. New ultra, new ultra kill update looking good. I I, I really highly recommend everybody um, check out Cultic. Um, it's it's really fun. It's fantastic. Oh, I, thanks, man. You have to say that just because I'm here. <laughs> yes, now give me the money that you promised me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fine. So that was uh, five quintillion dollars. What's that in US dollars? Uh, quintil oh shit. There we go. Oh, thank you, Fuse. I appreciate it. Thanks for stopping in, if, even if only for a moment. But yeah, um, ser uh, um, all silliness aside, um, I, I actually really fucking enjoy Cultic. Um, definitely one of my more favorite uh, first-person shooters to just kind of pick up and play. Ooh, there's the Grenadier. I just, it just, it just feels good. It's good combat. How did he live? Thank you, Jason. <laughs> you're, 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 you're a cheap whore, Counter-Strike 2, but a deal's a deal. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'll do uh, anything for a dollar. <laughs> Why do you think I ch Oh, shit, no. My, my, my earbud fell out, and then I got these cultists. Oh, hey, BGB, I didn't see it. Stop in. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. It's dark in those tunnels, too. Damn. Yes, the graphics are beautiful. It's a very good-looking game. Oh, my God, dude. Okay, you know, there was something. God, I, I love this. Just look at this. I'm taking a screenshot of that. I'm going to send that into FP Aesthetics. Um... Uh, 
I like the ambient lighting turned down, like I and you have to use the lighter and everything because I I'd gotten so used to it before um, before that option was in to just uh oh boy kind of run through without the um lighter or anything oh Jesus but now it's like it's dangerous I love this yeah the um the the um the asylum the inside asylum interior is is really really spooky with the new lighting especially with um uh with when you see the the uh oh god the the flashlight by then the pocket lamp that's what it's called this game is made in unity I saw that in the chat uh It's actually a Doom mod. <laughs> be a, be an impressive Doom mod. Oh my god, dude! It's so dark. Oh shit! Forgot about that. Uh. Supplies came out today. I'm gonna have to check that out. Oh yeah, supplies looks really good. I played the demo. I enjoyed it a bit. I think the thing that caught my eye with supplies is that the like assault rifle weapon looks like the um, the stormtrooper rifle from Dark Forces One, which I've always thought was like the pinnacle of like first person weapon sprites. Oh, I've never played Dark Forces, so. What? Oh my god, it's so good. You really have to play it with like a source. Well, there's not really. There's like uh, there's. There aren't any source ports for it, but I think somebody like reverse engineered the entire dang thing, uh, so it actually like plays decently now. Yeah, I remember that uh, the news of that came out not too long ago, like maybe a few months. Hmm. Faster reloading. Yeah, I think I'm gonna focus on the shotgun as a primary upgrades for this run. Okay, now I just gotta go back and fight the harvester. Oh my god. I just, I can't see anything. This is so scary. Oh, okay, cool. They killed each other. They do like doing that. So many petty arguments. Oh yeah, I did see that. Trepang two got a got a release date. I didn't play the uh, the demo when it came out. I don't think I've never even played Trepang. It's pretty cool. Uh, I mean, it's basically it is really just like a fear love letter kind of game. But that's I mean that's a good thing. So my my biggest thing will be if um, I don't I don't remember if they were planning to try to replicate the like the like horror themes of fear or not or if they were just going for the combat mechanics um because monolith that was like their golden era for horror games like fear and condemned and stuff mm -hmm. so that would be that would, that would be a tough bar to live up to where's the uh oh there he is hi buddy oh god there's another ghost here i forgot about that I just gotta remember where this guy is. Oh, cool. Alright. Okay, that's the tunnel's clear. And I just gotta go find the secret. Wow, I'm like genuinely like a little lost. Ah, okay, here we go. Nope, that's not the... I need to put... I have this... I have a, a live shotgun shell sitting on my desk from when I was recording sounds yesterday. I need to go put it away because I keep fiddling with it. I'm gonna like blow my hand off. <laughs> Yeah, please don't uh, don't do that. I need that hand. Just yeah, one. how else are you gonna do activities one-handed? Exactly. Well, that'll be the only way to do them if I blow one of my hands off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but not not with that hand that you lost. 
Okay, here we go. God, th this was terrifying coming through here. And I, I went the wrong way. Speaking of ammo, I finally managed to get my hands on some more some more uh, Mauser rounds. Old oh yeah, you're telling me. Old 763 by 25 millimeter. It's so hard to find, but somebody or a supplier that I've had it on my wish list finally came back in stock. So I grabbed me a couple and then bought a whole bunch of dummy rounds to make the shipping worth it. What are you going to do with that Mauser? Ooh, ooh. Uh, shoot it very sparingly was kind of my plan. I imagine the, the ammo is not cheap. Yeah, it's like 80 cents a round. Just like the worst, the worst ever, but it's not, not great. Adds up pretty fast, especially in a, especially in a, in a handgun that can hold 10 rounds in it. <laughs> it's like eight bucks every time you, every time you dump it out. Chapter 2 is indeed going to have a one-handed chatty. Actually working on it right now. Not very, not very quickly, but I'm very distracted at the moment. God bless you, darling. That was, that was a sneeze. Bless you. Oh my god. Oh, you, you could hear that? Runner? Yeah, I sure can. Ooh. There we go. God, I love the dead eye so much. And the music that kicks in here. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah, it's one of, one of my favorite tracks. It was actually a last kind of a last minute rewrite too. It used to have a different track here that wasn't very good. Oh, really? I I remember you were doing some rewrites before um, full release, but I don't remember if you mentioned this track specifically. I th oh, I think you yeah. were telling me about the main menu, the menu theme or the yeah, intro this theme. One, this, uh, the th well, it was more so like the theme for this area was unfinished, and I just had completely forgotten about it um, until I was like play testing before launch, and I was like, oh shit, I never finished this track. Uh, and then oh, okay. I, but I, I didn't. I didn't really like the track either. It wasn't very good, so I rewrote it, and I wound up being one of my favorites. Not as good as Rock House Showdown, I don't think. Whew. Or the the Crypt Shootout is a fan favorite. Too. Oh, the Crypt one is so good. Uh, hello, Roby. Thank you for stopping in. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, cuddle puppy, my name is Jason. You don't have to call me Herb's spouse. That's okay. <laughs> I love how you said cuddle puppy. Like, <laughs> that's like a pet name or something. <laughs> oh, cuddle puppy, you don't have to call me spouse. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, when, uh, when you, when Man. you guys sh come, come over in May, it's gonna be, uh, our our significant others are going to be like who the hell are these idiots <laughs> well i feel like maybe, maybe we should if we had actually properly captured the audio from our doom 2 playthrough uh i feel like we could have just played that back and it would have been a really good like it would have been <laughs> just, really good to prepare them just <laughs> I still like how it was just just me like standing there in your clip just in pussy. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yep. That was pretty good. I still love that clip of uh when I like we got stuck in that like toxic goo pit and we were like trying to rocket launch each other. Oh yeah, that that was that was really good. Oh shit. I can throw dynamite too, bitch. Okay, all right, that was a good clear. Gotta just take things a little methodically sometimes, even though I like to play a little Unga Bunga. Although playing Unga Bunga on Extreme is uh, Extreme Plus is uh, 
if there wasn't the permadeath, I think I would be hey, fine. Hey, no one forced you to turn permadeath on. Oh, I know. It's my own doing. But, uh, hey. We are, uh... Hold on, let me see. All kills, all secrets. All right, perfect. Uh, Koro, yeah, the game is being developed by, uh, basically just you, right, Jason? With, uh, occasional outside help. I mean, you're obviously with 3D Realms, um, publishing, yeah. giving you some resources and people you can rely yeah, on. Yeah, so develop development's just all me. I do the art and code and level design and music and yada, yada, yada. Um, but I have, um, I have a, a QA team that's partially 3d realms folks and partially just people from the community that i use to play test larger releases um and then yeah i had some help with with marketing and then stuff from from the publisher all right i i absolutely love this change that you did here with the with the truck you just come on over here and the lights Nothing go bad out will happen it'll be fine don't worry about it Just that slapping sound when they lunge at you. <laughs> I should have used the like, the like classic like stock sound effect punch sound. <laughs> so because, so yeah, the zombies. Uh, first of all, this this is just one of the coolest parts in the game uh, for me. Just because, uh, like, just look at it. It's terrifying, especially with like the the ambient lighting turned down. Um, all these just like shadowy figures coming at you and they 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 jump it's I so almost, good yeah, i almost i almost took this part out of the game i'm really glad, I'm glad you did i'm glad yeah yeah me too well it's just like i mean a lot of the a lot of the the like appeal of this segment is kind of just like the shock value of not really expecting anything but when you as the developer when you have like all of the enemy positions memorized and, and everything it like there's not it's not very impactful and so I was like, man, I don't even know if this part's any fun. I, maybe I should just, I was like, gonna remove it. But uh, then I had, when it was being play tested, uh, people were responding really positively to it. So, oh, okay, well, maybe I won't remove it then. They'll leave it in there. Nelly refuses to play this part of the game. She does not like the, uh, she does not like getting, getting jumped at. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm trying to take it as slow as I can because I know the second I rush through, it's just going to be pain. And those those uh, zombie slaps hurt on Extreme Plus. Everything hurts, if we're being totally honest here. If you have the, if you have the hatchet and uh, time your dashes really well, you can... Because the uh, the enemy's leaping attack, it does fa it factors in your movement speed, but it doesn't factor in um your movement modifiers so um oh. like dashing dashing is considered like a separate movement modifier that's added on top of your your movement speed okay um and then they don't factor that in so they won't factor in your dodge speed in their their lunging trajectory okay that's good to know so you can like wait till they're about to leap and then just dash backwards and they'll they'll jump short and then you can just chop their head off hmm yeah, because they're pretty weak, um, relatively, right? Or do they have like a weakness to the axe specifically? Uh, they they have a higher headshot weakness than other enemies, um, so their heads are they are they're more resistant to body shots, but they have like a double headshot modifier, so they take a lot more damage from headshots, and they take an extra dip bonus from slashing damage to the head, like which is pretty much just the hatchet. Mm -hmm. So like if you sneak up behind one that's that hasn't noticed you and you fully charge an attack and throw it at their head and hit them in the head, it's like it's like the the fifty percent extra charge damage plus the double sneak attack bonus plus the double headshot modifier plus their like double zombie headshot multiplier and it usually does enough damage to just to just jib them instantly. Ah, that's great. So they just explode. Because you have to do, like, you have to, like, dish out. You have to kill an enemy, and you have to be dealing, like, their entire health pool worth of damage in order to just jib them without an explosion. Which mm -hmm. you can usually do if you fully upgrade the shotgun and then, like, barrel stuff them with it. And then you can usually, you can usually get, do enough damage to, 
to destroy him like that. Hey, I love I love just the insta jibbing. It's it's really it's really satisfying, and uh, it's it's really funny when enemies just insta jib each other. It's that's the funniest funniest thing. Or like, I love it when I've only seen this happen a couple of times. Is when the enemy kicks something into another enemy and it kills them, or they kick it into a wall and they kill themselves. Yeah, that's always really fun. Uh, um, the uh, the cultist in the water room in the first map that kicks the lantern at you. Uh, he used to be a little closer to those barrels. Mm -hmm. And sometimes he would he would try to kick the barrel, but he would kick it at himself, and he would like launch himself at you with it. So it's like it's like a like cultist jump scare. As soon as you walk in the room, he just comes flying across the room at you. <laughs> but I moved the uh, I moved the um, barrels a little further away, so he doesn't do that as often. He can still do it. That's fucking hilarious. I love that. Okay. Oh, hey, Zach. Oh, hey. Well, thank you. Thank you for the $6.90, my friend. What if cultic guy said it's culting time? It's culticking time and cultic all over the guys or something. I don't care. I, I don't I don't. I don't know. Not, I don't care. Thank you, Zach. Much appreciated. I was literally, literally just watching the cinema sins from Morbius right before uh, I jumped on the stream here. Oh, nice. I forgot, I, I forgot how great that movie was. I... So, <laughs> um... I think I think Zach will know about this because we're in this Discord together. Um, but uh, yes, we were in a Discord, or we are in a Discord group. Um, and one day, a bunch of the people on that Discord just decided to watch Morbius not once, not twice, but three times, all in a row. Nice. And just just one big morb sitting. I was. I joined for like 20 minutes and I was like, yeah, I'm good. I don't need this. I don't need this in my life. The Morbathon. Uh, yeah, I went to see it in the theaters because I had that AMC membership at the time where I could just like go see three movies a week, which was really nice until I realized that I hate like teenagers in movie theaters with the fashion. Mm. Um, anyway, and I went with a friend of mine and we it was just like the whole movie. It's just like, what the, what the fuck is happening? What is this? And you're just like like getting vi and he he's a much bigger like comic bird comic bird comic, comic bird nerd than I am and so he was like getting visibly upset at, at all the stuff that was going on. God, it was it was something. I just I remember the the the, the Doctor Who Matt Smith that's what his name was. I remember Matt Smith dancing and it's like something like like. Like uh, is, that, is that Milo Milo's actor? Yeah, yeah, uh, Milo's actor. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just like I. It was just. It was. Just, it's so. I mean, like obviously, bad movie, but just like. So bad, like oh man, it's it's just crazy. Like some of the stuff that, like I'm I'm not much of a writer. Obviously, I'm not a filmmaker, but like some of those things, you have to like you look at it. And it's like, how? No, we can't. You can't put this in a movie. That's ridiculous. Like that. Yeah. No, that's that's dumb. Like I remember, I remember one of the things that made me like laugh out loud is uh, when. Like when when the the police or the detectives are like reviewing the like. Street camera footage of like Milo killing a, a person, mm -hmm. and they're just like, he's just like, that's what these blood suckers do. They multiply, and it's like, what do you mean? Like you're like you you know about vampires like this is like established vampire lore in this universe yeah I, this, this this line implies that like you guys are not only well aware of vampires existence but like have some kind of like line on their like their habits that's crazy and it's like like <laughs> there's like the line uh the newscaster lady is like well they they murder their victims and then drain their blood so they've been calling them the vampire murder i'm like wow that's how original mm. Yep, gotta love that, because, you know, because that was a Sony movie, right? Yeah, yeah, it was. They just, they I don't think they care. I think they're just like, comic book movie, big? Money, please. Money, please. Like, we made <laughs> Spider-Man back in 2002 and 
stuff. Oh yeah, know? and then and then the the after. Sorry for this is gonna. Be oh, you're good. You're good. If, you, if you haven't seen Morbius, close your ear holes. Ah, oh, damn. Uh, it. The after credits scene that just like decimates like the MCU's established storyline, like just I can't imagine being like one of the like MCU writers and you see that and it's like oh, oh good, <laughs> that's just what we needed. Oh, yeah, wasn't it like the Vulture or something like from the Spider-Man Homecoming? Uh, oh shit! Like like, wi like winds up in the Morbius universe, even though that's not. That's not exactly what like Doctor Strange's spell caused to happen. It's kind of like the other way around. I uh, it, yeah, a little mm, something. But I'm actually I've been like really burned out on Marvel stuff. Like I just oh I've been, yeah. I'm, I'm like I haven't watched like the last three series, and I didn't go see the new Black Panther movie. I don't know, man. I'm just like com I it's completely burned out on yeah. Marvel stuff right now. I I think unless you're like a really big fan of all of it. Uh, I think that's how most people feel, at least the way I see it. Yeah, yeah. I I really I want to get caught up on the old Netflix shows because I really want Melly to watch Punisher because it was really good. Oh, I love Punisher, Daredevil too. I you know I'm. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting cool. to see how um, they uh, uh, approach like Daredevil because I, I believe they're gonna be doing. Um, they're reboot not rebooting it but they're going to be starting it back up again like new season and everything yeah um, and i i don't think i don't think they've really said whether or not how much of like netflix daredevil is going to be canon and how much of it they're going to wipe because it's like if you try to like if you try to bring daredevil back but you just like erase like foggy and karen that's going to be that's going to be a, a big slap in the face yeah so. i i really hope they keep it the way it is um vara is you're gonna watch the stream a bit more before buying this okay yeah, cultic is very fun um it's not it's not like it's really not like blood um it's i don't even know what like the closest comparison would be um it's just fun I usually, I usually call i usually say it's uh it's like dark forces 2 mixed with resident evil 4 in terms of like uh in terms of like uh, like combat design and environment design and stuff like that. There we go. I love not going the intended path. How could you do this? Easy. I uh, blew up the dynamite. Or I blew up the crate through the door. Ah, oh, god, that's so good. It is kind of funny in this in this specific instance, uh, going the wrong way like that um, means that you have to fight all of the infected directly. But if because if you go the intended route, you have cover where that they can't really get over. Mm -hmm. So you just you just get to have fun lighting them on fire. But if you go the other way, there's a there's a spot in map seven where I did that too. Um, after you pull the uh, second switch to open the second set of doors in like the canyon area. Mm -hmm. um, uh, a handful of enemies are spawned in a position where they'll engage you if instead of taking the stairs back down you give into the intrusive thoughts and you jump into the water from way up high oh shit and if you do that then a, those enemies are in a position to attack you from there. oh yeah i i do that I, I i always fall down i'm gonna catch up on chat here real quick um sony is putting it in hard yep um when the avengers thing of trying your movies together time yeah the the cinematic universe thing was cool a long time ago uh what games besides ultra kill dusk pulse to burn damage and cult that can you recommend in the boomer shooter genre um trying to think of some other oh viscera fest is pretty fun um incision is pretty fun too but oh incision hard. is great i love incision um I, I i really love incisions like um uh just kind of like tone and its art direction and everything like you don't really see a lot of games that do that like I want to call it like biopunk, kinda, but that's probably not an accurate descriptor. Oh Jesus! Yeah, um, it's kind of it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like a like a diesel punk body horror. Kind yeah, of like, like somewhat Giger esque. I would even say like um, uh, like Bekshi I think it's his name is pronounced Bekshinsky. Um, he did like a lot of like kind of dark surreal art. It's it's really good. It's fantastic art direction. The, uh, I, I only know the the developer of that game by his Discord name, which is Smooth Brain Dev. Oh yeah, Smooth Brain Dev. 
But we yeah, that's a, all I know. Little, like, we have a little like private developer Discord with a few different like retro shooter devs in it that we kind of chat and it's a uh, he's a, he's a he's a good dude. It's a lot of fun to talk to. Oh, that's sick. Okay. Yeah, the incision revolver is really good. It was see like so the almost the entire time I was working on Coltec, I was refusing to play any other like retro shooters or boomer shooters because I was like I was really afraid of like playing one of them and being like, "Oh, this is really good. I should just give up." <laughs> but I but I made I made an exception for incision and the revolver alt fire. I was like, "I should just give up what I'm doing. This is way cool." Oh, did the me. the revolver <laughs> Okay. I I'm I'm a sucker for mechanics like that. Um, I don't know what like you call them. I've always called them like precision mechanics, stuff like parrying or um, yeah, uh, like just tech. cuts tech. Uh, yeah, the uh, like the true shot on the revolver is so good. I love it. I kind of wish some of the other weapons in Incision had. That. Oh god, I forgot these guys. I forgot. <laughs> forgot you guys added those in. Yeah, the uh, you used to just be able to backpedal out of the cellar because the door would stay open. Mm -hmm. um, I changed it so you get trapped in there with the big boy. I'm really excited to do. Um, I guess I haven't really talked about it publicly yet. Uh, my uh, actually no, I just shouldn't talk about that. Never mind. Yeah, yeah. You, no worries. You don't have to say anything to to the public. You can you can always tell me though. You can trust me. Oh, okay. Let me just let me get let me just. Hey, are you there? Can you hear me? Hey, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm really excited about uh, my 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 uh, spin spinoff game. Uh, oh wow! Where I'm gonna get to use the enemies in in a way that like isn't super first person shootery. And oh it's yeah, gonna be, it's gonna be really fun. It's gonna be fun oh, being no. able to <gasps> recycle their designs. Oh, that's so cool! But I also got chainsawed through the fucking hole in the wall. In the mind. Oh. You were just taunting him from the window and he didn't really care. I deserve that so bad. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, damn. Oh, yeah, White Hell. White Hell's good. Um... The, the Poro talking about games being too dark. Uh, it's worth noting that Herb is specifically playing with the brightness turned down for a moodier experience. Uh, Cultic is by default brighter than this. Oh yeah, yeah. Like uh, I could bring it up just like a little bit, probably for like viewer experience as well. But uh, I don't want to bring it up past like what sixty-five. You said was a nice moody. Uh, yes, yeah, seventy-five is the default, and I think sixty sixty-five is is a good like moody, but not like hard to see. Yeah. With 45, forbidden... is, 45 is a good like horror experience and turning it down to zero is just ridiculous it's just pitch <laughs> dark everywhere with forbidden information comes punishment yeah there we go I died for your sins everybody don't worry I died for insider information <laughs> okay I'm gonna grab some water real quick because I'm a little dehydrated a little stretch break and I'll be right back enjoy Oh, and uh, Fuse is asking, uh, Jason, what your inspiration to make the game is, if you don't mind them asking. Uh, so, I mean, I, I'm, so I'm 30, so I grew up playing a lot of, like, well, at the time they were just shooters, but, you know, now it's okay, retro shooters, but, like, like Doom and Dark Forces and Blood and Dark Forces 2 and such. So, um, I've since I grew up playing those, I've pretty much always wanted to make a game like that. Um, but as I've gotten more into like horror games and stuff, my tastes have changed a little bit. So, um, I really wanted to try to make a game that was like, had like the aesthetics of the games I played growing up. Um, but had more, some more like modern mechanics of games that I really enjoyed as an adult. Um, so you like, you know, like the combat design and, and Resident Evil 4 and like, uh, like kicking and, and physics objects and environmental interaction, um, stuff that just wasn't really entirely possible at the time um, so it's just kind of like bringing together a lot of elements of different games that I like um, to try to make one one experience that's kind of why I work on the game by myself because so much of it's just wanting to like execute ideas that I have and not have to like fight with other developers about it um, and sometimes those things don't work out and they don't make it in the game but having the freedom to just like try out all these little ideas 
um, was really nice. But yeah, so just kind of always wanted to make uh, a retro shooter, and uh, I've tried to make, I tried to start Cultic a few times in the past, but I just didn't really have like the, well, at one point I just didn't have like the game development chops to do it because I was a 2D developer for the longest time and didn't get into like 3D development until 2016 or so, so I had never touched 3D modeling or texturing or like C Sharp or Unity or anything at all. Um, and then it was just getting to a point where I felt comfortable and that my 3D modeling had come along enough that I could make a game that would do service to this idea I had in my head. And uh, so yeah, it's, it took me a while to get there. Oh my God, you're starting over completely. Huh? Yes, I am. I'm uh, permadeath, my friend. But now that I kind of got like a, a feel for how things are running, um, I'm gonna move probably with a little more haste. Uh, so Cultic's the first game that I've finished and shipped, um, but I've probably worked on, oh God, I've probably worked on like 200 games <laughs> or so since, cause I started game development when I was like 11 or 12. And by game development back then, I mean like stealing sprites from the internet and putting them in Game Maker and making absolute garbage. <laughs> was, I mean, that, that's kind of what it was at the time. Uh, but I mean, I but I mean, I just have kind of relentlessly project hopped since then. So I've probably like started and stopped a ridiculous amount of projects. Um, but I didn't really get serious about development until probably around 2016 when I finally started like actually learning Unity and C Sharp and everything. Um, and so the only other games of like note that I've made is probably Graveyard Shift 2, um, which is just like a goofy like skeleton haha -ha Halloween meme game um, that started out as just like a multiplayer experiment, just trying to learn like the basics of netcode. Um, but then a post I made about it like got a ton of attention, so I decided to make it kind of a little mini game. But uh, yeah, that's to be the first thing I've actually finished. Hopefully the first of several hopefully this isn't the only thing i ever managed to complete but oh you will i'm sure you will go on to make many very good projects complete them too um <clears throat> some additional fun information that i found out when i think you and i first started talking was uh you made the um re you're dead what like like music music video quote unquote oh yeah the gmod Ari, your your Ari, your brains. Ari, your yeah. brains. That's right. Yeah. 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 I. I. <laughs> that's so funny because I, I I watched that as like a kid like so much and then. <laughs> here we are years later. Yeah, it's always it's always cursed that the stuff that you're like, that you're mo that like gets the most popular and you're mo like, you're most well known for is stuff that by today's standards you just like won't even look at because it's just it's so bad. <laughs> uh, because I, I made RE Your Brains when I was like 14. Oh, wow. <laughs> it so, so long. It's literally made in Windows Movie Maker. <laughs> oh, yeah. So long ago. <laughs> God, I don't even know how many people watching this right now are like. Because a lot of my audience is, um, you know, Ultra Kill players, and a lot of them are like, you know, like late teens probably, so they might not even know what that is. <laughs> Yeah, I I get comments. Uh, I still because I still get a lot of comments on that video, and people will be like, "I watched this when I was five, and now I'm 18," and I'm like, "Oh God, I'm one foot in the grave." <laughs> 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 oh God. Uh, so what should we see in episode two, or is it a secret? I, that's all up to Jason to uh, disclose. I'm it's sure that yeah, that's a secret. The only the only stuff I've really talked about publicly is just that there's going to be some new weapons. Um, there'll be some al some weapon alternates, um, but that's that's about all that I've talked about publicly so far. I usually don't like to I don't like to tease stuff until I have like that thing actually made and I can back it up. Like I was I was experimenting with that stupid co-op mode for like all of like January and February, but I didn't say anything because I was like, if I can't get this working, mm -hmm. then it would be really mean to tease it. And then in the end, I wound up giving up on it. Yeah. It taking up so much of my time. So I was like, it would have been mean to tease co-op and then be like, actually just kidding. I'm too much of a, I'm too much of a smooth brained coder to figure out how to get all this net code crap working. Uh, so that went back on the shelf. 
It's a shame. I went through the trouble of rendering all of the player sprites, too. It took me forever. I know. Uh, yeah, uh, you do screenshot Saturday Sorry. posts, right? Sorry uh, cause you... for being 23. It's okay. Oh, shit. Uh, I don't, I don't, uh, I post stuff just kind of whenever. I don't usually do screenshot Saturday because I'm usually not working on Saturdays. Um, but I post stuff just throughout the week generally. If I remember, I'll post a screenshot Saturday here and again. Yeah, but, you'll, you'll, um, in the spirit of screenshot Saturday. Yeah, I just I just post stuff like as soon as I finish it, I'm like, hey, this is cool. I'm gonna share this, and then I do. I'm not really uh, I'm not patient enough to have like a structured social media presence. One day I'll hit a shot. But yeah, if, uh, if you guys haven't actually, you know what? Time to time to chill here a little bit. Let's see. If you if you have a Twitter and you haven't done this yet, and if you find Cultic interesting or if you find Jason interesting, here is a link to his Twitter. Oh my God! Go follow him there. Man, I didn't even have to pay you for that one. No. <laughs> you just have to give me a kiss later, okay? Done. <laughs> oh my God! Speaking of speaking of kissing. Uh, <laughs> Did I tell you about that um, that AI generated SpongeBob stream? Yeah, uh, you that did. I was watching the other day. Yeah. So it's it's very much like the uh, it's very much like like that unlimited uh, Steam or infinite unlimited Steam one that does steamed hams episodes. Yeah. Um, where, where it's just like a, a low effort like 3D scene and they just have characters uh, wandering around mindlessly. But they had a, a feature in there where any time two characters would bump into each other, it would play a little smooch sound effect, <laughs> and it would just have me rolling. It was so good. Is it is that still down? Is it oh, it's still? Gone. It's oh, it's gone. gone. Yeah, they, um, the 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 stream had like a feature where the community, like the Twitch chat, could suggest topics for the AI, and somebody decided to bring up uh, a certain sensitive country nearby China. And uh, that resulted in the stream getting destroyed in like two minutes. It was just gone. Like the yep. whole channel's gone. Good lord. What a shame. Oh shit, dude, that fall damage ate me up. Gotta roll out of that. I thought I jumped in the water and it wasn't shallow, but it was shallow. Uh, Zach, I, I don't. I try to stick to like an eight to five schedule, but it's very loose. Like if I wake up in the morning and I'm just like feeling depressed and unmotivated, then I will do self care instead. So I might get up and play video games for a bit and then work. The night, the thing is like with game dev, I work way faster if I'm like specifically motivated. So sometimes I'll just hang out during the day. And then at like 4 PM, I might get a burst of motivation and then get a ridiculous amount done in like two hours. Um, so I try to stick to eight to five just because like, you know, most of my friends still work regular eight to five hours So if I want to like hang out with them and play games and whatnot, then that's usually going to be in the evening So I want to be done working by then But I will say that when I first went full-time on game dev back in um, September of 2021 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, I think God, it's 21 ago. Two almost yeah, it was, two full years ago. Yeah, geez man time yeah, when I when I finally went full time on Cultic instead of because I had before that just had a regular full time job. Um, the first few weeks it was very difficult to like not just sleep in until like ten every day. <laughs> it's just like the first time in my life I've not like I've been getting paid to not have an eight to, like to have like an unstructured day, which is really really nice, really liberating. Uh, so like I was always like if if Cultic doesn't work out, I don't know how I'm gonna go back to an eight to five. It might actually kill me. <laughs> and luckily it's been working out yeah so far but uh it's uh yeah it's i i i try i try my best not to take it for granted because i know that like it's uh it's a very precarious situation i've got myself in now like if i want to continue to to have a roof to live under i have to keep up the work so uh but it is nice being able to like go to the dentist if i need to you know and not have to like take a day off of work to do it 
um, that kind of thing is really nice. Mm-hmm. But it just, it, you know, it really shouldn't be a problem. Our work culture shouldn't be such garbage that that's such a big deal, but alas. Yeah, I know. That's one of the reasons I want to look for a, a, a work from home. Um, just because I've gotten I've gotten pretty disillusioned with the medical field. Um, you and I were talking about this earlier, but uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I just I, I do like to work with people. Um, but I think ever since COVID, I've gotten a lot more like nervous as a person. Um, so being yeah, around people has just become unpredictable, and I just like working at the Red Cross was not ideal. Uh, horrible hours. Um, I was working 55, almost 60 hours. Um, that is one of the like really crazy side effects of, of the whole, of, um, like the pandemic overall was just like, cause I had, I had the same thing. Like my, like my anxiety post COVID is so much worse than it was pre just like the, like just how like stressful that period was, um, of just like, like how much was changing and how uncertain things were and like just like kind of like witnessing the the normalcy of your life like fall apart Mm -hmm. and uh and then just like how toxic kind of like politics and everything got during that time it was just like it was rough and yeah uh, a little rough don't you think a little rough don't you think (laughs) so no (laughs) i i I feel you and I, i imagine that working like working in the medical field like post COVID has probably been really tough for a lot of people. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm very fortunate that during that time I was, I had a remote job, so I was working from home. I can't imagine like, I can't imagine working like a front lines thing, whether that's at a hospital or at like a grocery store or whatever during COVID, that would have been the worst. So no, big, big, yeah, props, I... big, big props to the people who, who stuck it out and, and kept us running during that time. Ooh, I'm going to die here again. But yes, I, I agree. Like, thank God for all the grocery workers, healthcare workers that were like working through it. Like when I started working at like a nursing home, it was still like it was twenty twenty, but it was after like it was like it was like September of twenty twenty. So the uh, side effects of everything, I I didn't experience it as much as uh, the people I had worked with had, and uh, it was yeah. it was still like tough for me and I, I like they were telling me like all the seniors that they were um taking care of like by the time i was working there they can all be out in the living room with each other and they can have contact you know with their families if they went to the rooms but like peak covid everybody's locked in the rooms meals by themselves and that's not good for not only like the workers mental health but especially the seniors like i, I was just uh, sorry to get like a little depressing here but like People fine. people were just dying like left and right in senior homes just because they weren't getting the connections that they needed and the help that they needed to like you know live especially like people with dementia or Alzheimer's or other debilitating things so it was uh, yeah. it was it was rough it was rough for a lot of people. Uh, Chronos, what kind like what what genre of games are you looking for recommendations in like other boomer shooters or just in general? My tastes are kind of all over the place, so I don't know if it'll be a very useful answer. Uh, Nightmare Reaper. I, I need to get back to Nightmare Reaper. I'm not personally a huge fan of, like, roguelikes or roguelikes, but I've, I've gotten a lot more. Oh, my God, these boys are just up the hill. Um, after playing a little bit of Hades recently, and then um, there's a uh, demo of a game called Voidborn, which I recommend everybody check out. Um, so I've enjoyed Nightmare it a little Reaper. bit more. Nightmare Reaper isn't a uh, isn't like a full on rogue like. Uh, yeah. Like if you if, if you die, you don't have to like start over. Mm-hmm. Um, which is something that kept me away from playing it because I was like, I I'm just gonna die, and then have to replay the game. But apparently, you just re- you just like start at the beginning of the map that you were on. So there is, there is that that important distinction. I remember that the dev like jumped down my throat for that at one point, and I was like, okay, okay, I get it. <laughs> it's not a rogue like. Okay. Yeah, I didn't quite realize that either, so that's definitely um, something I should rectify. Oh my god. These pistol cultists, man, they uh, they hurt. But yeah, I guess the game recommendations for me, um, I play a ridiculous amount of Phasmophobia. 
Um, I'm a big, big horror game, horror guy, and I'm a big co-op guy, and that's like as good as it gets because it's not like jump scare horror, but it's just like very organic horror, mm -hmm. um, which is great. Plus, it's like a puzzle game and very replayable. It's a lot of fun with that. I play a ridiculous amount of uh, Seven Days to Die as well, usually with mods. Also, a very good time. Uh, big Resident Evil 4 fan. Play a lot of that. But uh, I'm 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 old and set in my ways. I pretty much have like a small set of games that I play a ridiculous amount of, and then I, I very rarely branch out in the new in the new territory. I'm a little like that myself. I. Uh... I stick around probably like the same few games. I try to give new games a shot, though. Yeah, I, I, I like. That's I have a really hard time describing it, but I get like, I get like a weird, overwhelming anxiety when I start a new game and there's like too much to do. Um, like, in any pretty much any like AAA game that's like open world, I always like really like the most recent example would be I tried to play Assassin's Creed Origins and Cyberpunk. And I, in both games, I was really into the prologue where it's more of like a guided experience. And I was like, oh, this is dope. Like, this game is really fun. And then as soon as it like the prologue ends and it just dumps you out into the open world. And it's like you have this giant map and like 600 side quests pop up. And it's like, also, here's the collectathon. It's just like it like overwhelms my brain. And I'm like, I know I'm not going to have time to do all of this. Mm. And it's just like, I don't know where to start. So I generally play games that I can experience in short sessions more so, whether that's a game that I can beat in a short session or games that I can just play with like a friend like Phasmophobia, just like jump in, run a couple maps and and jump back out. I don't know if it's just like old, being old and not having much free time and having, uh, having a lot of stuff I know I need to be working on, but I have a lot of trouble just like sitting down and like being, just letting myself play a game and enjoy it without my brain being like, you could be working on this instead. I need to get better about it, though, for sure. I'm just, like... For me, very few games, like, really capture my attention like I want them to. Um, like, even if I'm, like, enjoying them as an experience, there'll be something about them where I'm just like, huh, you know, it's fun, but, like, I could be playing this other game that I find a lot more fun, like, right out of the yeah. gate, you know? Um, yeah. I'm trying to be better about that, though. Yeah, so like right now you're literally just thinking like, man, Cultic's okay, but I could be playing Ultra Killer right now. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I I like, uh, I'm I'm, even after like P2 dropped, I'm still like, kind of burnt on Ultra Kill. I just I played it so much and I still yeah. love it, but it's just. I'm burnt out on Seven Days to Die right now because I found the we were trying the uh, the Darkness Falls mod pack for that, which is just so much fun. And like I had like three different servers going. Like I had like a solo map that I was playing in my downtime, and then like one that I was playing with Melly, and then one that I was playing with my friend Sai, and like, oh man! And we got to like end game in all three of them. <laughs> it was just like oh, wow. I think it's time to put this down for a bit. But I saw somebody asked uh, if we had any words about uh, RE4 remake. RE4 remake is is terrible. Nobody should play it. It's an awful game. Can't believe Capcom would put it. It's like RE3 all over again. Yeah, that's that's a loaded statement right there. No, remake was great. I, I, I was I said earlier. I think I said earlier on the stream even. But like I think RE4 remake is the first game since Elden Ring that I just like couldn't put down. I'm just like oh, no, yeah. I have to keep playing. And like I said, usually that doesn't happen. Usually I get like my my lizard brain is like you should be doing something else. You should go be productive. And then I log out and do something else. But no, I was really really sucked into RE4 remake. Mm -hmm. It was really fun. I don't think it replaces the original for me, not that it was trying to, but the original, like, just the mechanics of the original are so tight and methodical that you can really just, like, turn your brain off and just, like, play through RE4 in an afternoon. And I feel like the remake with how much more... Fuck. With, yes, with how much more fuck there is. Um, <laughs> Sorry. With the... The remake just doesn't... not The remake's combat is just a little more loose. Um, like, you don't have that, like, every headshot is a stun and, you know, like... If an enemy, you know, like, if you go and melee an enemy, it's always going to knock everybody around them down. It's not as consistent in that way, which isn't bad, but it's just, you know, it's a different experience. Mm -hmm. So I don't I don't know that I'll be replaying it as much as I did the original. I, that, that's what I'm thinking. I, like, I really love the remake. Um, I would like to do, like, a video on kind of, like, how it approaches combat and how it's, like, so diverse from, like, the original and how they work in different ways. Um 
uh, just because it's it's a lot more um, intense and you know it's a, it's a it's a new modern game, so you know they're gonna have a lot more things to work with. But um, even that, it's just it, yeah, you're you're right. It's just so different because um, uh, you have more resources you need to juggle. I found myself, despite having like a an, an attaché case that was just constantly full. I was also like running low on ammo constantly, except for like handgun ammo or something. Um, so uh, there's a there's a lot of resource management in it, more so than I think in the original. Um, yeah. So you really got to use uh, um, everything you have to your advantage. You know, learn how to craft things on the spot. You know, oh, you got three plagas type bees out there that are gonna munch your head off. Well, you, you better craft a uh, flash uh, flash grenade real quick otherwise you're you're gonna have sure to sink I, a lot of ammo into those bitches I'm pretty sure I only ever crafted bolts for the bolt thrower I don't think I ever made like anything else well look at you I uh, I, I never used did, the bolt thrower uh, it's so good it did really surprise me that there was no way to to repair your knife using your resources that seems kind of crazy to me like you couldn't, you couldn't use like you know large resources to like sh you know repair your knife or something on the fly. That mm -hmm. seemed like that would be a like kind of a, a no brainer. Even if it was just like just a little bit, but at the rate at which they give you like like kitchen knives and boot knives, um, I can see why that might like make them even like more redundant. Uh, th not that yeah. they're redundant, but like you know because they have their use, and especially after you upgrade the knife durability. There's like really no need to worry after a while, um, and then you can just you know craft some some bolts if you're using the bolt thrower. I use the bolt thrower so much; it's so good. <laughs> I I saw um, under the Mayo's like RE4 review, and I I, I, I really enjoyed it. And uh, he was showing showing off stuff with the bolt thrower that I just I didn't really think about like using before and i was like oh maybe i should start using the bolt thrower more op more often so um, I, uh, it was a good video i don't i don't have much respect for that guy after after the whole cultic thing but uh yeah, oh no, what the happened thrower, the bolt thrower is really cool uh Our, oh he just like he just, like made like a really big point of like constantly comparing cultic to blood ah um, uh, okay and was like talking on twitter about how he was going to do a video uh like comparing the two and i'm like like I di like directly asked him to not do that. I was just like, like the 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 two aren't meant to be the same game. So like directly comparing them is is really silly because they they the design of the games is completely different. Um, uh. But he did it anyway, and it was very much a video of like, well, Cultic's not as good because it does this differently, and it's like that, that's uh. stupid. Like don't and the bat and like doing that just like it tends to inflame the fan base of one over the other mm -hmm. and it's just like that's why like i always avoid comparing the two because like when people hear like oh cultic's like blood they immediately think like oh cultic is better than blood and it's like mm -hmm. no like the, they're not the, they're not meant to be the same game they're very very different and, and i'm like i'm a big blood fan myself so like i'm not out here trying to like be like oh this is just a better game so it's just like stop it but that was mm -hmm. kind of a, a little frustrating on my end because like i asked him like directly like, okay yeah like please please don't do that like that's just gonna be and he did it anyway. Mm, yeah, that sucks. I know he's he's been quite a uh, um, controversial figure in uh, uh, generally the the first person shooter uh, um, community. I I've been pretty back and forth on like um, personally like where I stand as far as my opinions of his content. Um, I. I might not always agree with like what he has to say, but there's some things like he does say where I'm like, oh, okay, I've never thought about that before. But there's there's certainly a lot of other stuff. I'm like, mm, no. Yeah, I, have, I haven't really watched any of his content to know like how how good he is as a reviewer. It's just like that. That was my pretty much my only interaction. Mm, was, okay. Was that? And it's just like, oh, well, man, I, like, I, I I work so hard to try to separate the two in like in like my marketing mm -hmm. um, because like it's. If you go if you go into cultic expecting blood then you're going to be disappointed because they're, they're just very very different games yeah and so, and so i'm to like try as much as much as i can to divide the two there it's like yes it has build engine aesthetics yes you can throw dynamite but it's like that's 
like the game is much more RE4 than it is Blood. Like the the DNA of of other games are far more prevalent mm -hmm. than. Uh, than yeah, Blood. I I know I had some some friends um, that were not super into cultic because of uh all the comparisons they they've heard of blood like they went into it expecting blood or something like blood right yeah um, it's just it's, it's just not the same thing it's not it's not really a b horror vibe game it doesn't have the uh like the does, it doesn't have the like brutal hit scanner component where you kind of have to like learn the maps and like memorize enemy placements and the, the ttk back and forth mm -hmm. is, is very different and you've got like the physics interactions, and you've got like the the, the more utility the more utility based approach to dynamite, and it's just like it's a lot of it's just different. It's, which is not not saying that blood is bad. Blood is one of my favorite games like oh, of yeah. all time, um, but it's just like it's different there, because there's stuff in blood that like I recognize did doesn't age well in terms of like game design, mm -hmm. like especially like the the, the hit scanning. Uh, it's just woof, that's something. Um, that doesn't make, make me enjoy the game any less, but it is very much like a thing that I only enjoy in blood because I know that it's like part of the experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I totally understand. Um, yeah, and uh, totally too, they're just very different. Um, this game is very serious in its tone and in presentation, whereas blood is blood's quite goofy. Yeah, um, and like. There we go. There's which, is, which is great. I mean, like, Blood's tone is, is wonderful. Oh, I love it. Like, it's a, it's a great B horror romp. But again, like, that's the other thing. It's like coming into Cultic expecting, like, one liners and, and lots of over horror movie references. It's just not, it's not there. I'm not creative enough to do that. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> I know. It's, it's, I, 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 I really love, like, the carnival level. I think, did I already say that? Um, the carnival in, in Blood and the secret level is, oh, I love those. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. but, really um, good. I just like, and there's some like cool like moments in blood like um, uh, when you're in like the the city. I, I've only I've only given blood like a full playthrough once, so my memory of it's really not amazing. But um, like the the air raid um, through the city, I thought that was really mm -hmm. cool. Um, everything leading up to Chernobog was was really cool. Um, but um, like in, in cultic like like seeing the asylum for the first time when the music kicks in and you're up against all those enemies. Oh God, that was so awesome. It's, it's different. Cause it's, it's like, I, I, I don't, I'm trying to figure out what I'm trying to say here while I'm also trying not to die. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I get, I yeah, get yeah, yeah. Very, very different games. Inspirations, you know, inspirations are there, but I got, I was going to, I, um, I guess I'll, I'll be that guy. Have you played Death Wish yet? I've started Death Wish, and I got past, like, the first couple levels, but I never got back to it. And I, I know Death Wish is supposed to be, like, really fantastic. Yeah, it's it's really it's, – it's, like, I mean, just as as an, as an extension to Blood, like, it's a lot of fun. But just, like, as, as a build engine spectacle, like, just what what that guy was able to accomplish – with the build engine is really impressive. Like it's just a really great set of levels. And he's still updating it. Yeah. Which yeah. I think is the most fantastic part. Also the fact that like he, I mean, there's like some, there's like some jump scares in Death Wish that are set up really well. And like, I never would have figured that a build engine game would like have me on edge, like have me spooked out. Yeah, like, I've, I've heard a lot of people talk about that. I like I haven't like I really wanted to watch Civi's Death Wish video, but I'm like no, I can't. I need to go into this as blind as possible. Yeah, I would definitely recommend. Like I watched, um, so I, I was like I watched Civi's Death Wish video um, in pieces. Every time I would finish a Death Wish map because they're long, they're big maps. Oh yeah. Um, I, then I would watch like the next day at lunch. I would watch up to the point where I was because it's like oh I want to see like what his reaction to this was. What's that? That was something kind of interesting. Was like uh, when having Civi do a, a cultic video that was that was weird it's just like you know this is a, a content creator that i've watched for several years and now like my game is on their channel like mm -hmm. this is a really a really strange experience <laughs> yeah i can imagine i need to i need to pick up on watching some of his content i a lot of like my favorite youtubers i just haven't watched in a minute just because i've been just watching other content um oh god oh this is such a bad situation they're all in the water. 
Oh, motherfucker. Oh, Jesus. Um, damn. That sucks. Don't worry, we'll get past the first level again here. Man, I'm in like a big phasmophobia kick right now. I just, uh... With the Easter update? Yeah, well, I just played the Easter update and, uh... And, uh, did the whole, like, ARG thing that they have in there, and now I'm on, like, a big phasmophobia kick. <laughs> I also really want to play ARK again. I've been having an urge to fire up an ARK server, but I don't know if I have 300 gigs to dedicate to reinstalling it. Oh my god, that's ridiculous. It's huge. It's like the base game is, like, 230, and then I have to install the server files, too. That's fucked up. And then all of the add-ons to it, which is another few gig, like the mods that I play with it, another few gigs. Yeah, it's wild. I um, I don't know what I've been really wanting to play recently outside of like RE4. Like I, I'm just I'm in a big like Resident Evil kick again. Um, yeah. I'm, uh, you know, playing through RE4 Randomizer. Um, oh, I want to I wanna get back to um, RE1 Remake um, and do uh, the... Uh, I've never done the, the real survival mode. And, what is that? Um, that is uh, no auto-aim. Um, enemies uh, have more... I think it's either enemies have more health or they do more damage. Um, and item boxes aren't linked up. Oh really? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So it's a lot more. Um, I I've played a little bit of it, and what I really love about it, and uh, you know, that's what I love about classic RE, is um. Um. That like, mental puzzle you're playing in your head, uh, when you're going through the mansion, because it's like, okay, you know, I got this item so i need to go back through here but this pathway's got some zombies in it so i could take the longer route but you know it could be a little bit faster if i took a risk and try to dodge or take them out and make sure i have some kerosene or and it's just it's just amplified more on uh real survival because um you're like okay i left this item over in the item box on the west wing so i need to head on over there and make sure i follow this path and uh, it's it's a lot more intense. I, I it's it's like from what I've played, it feels like a real like this. So this is survival horror, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I. Uh, that sounds kind of miserable to me. <laughs> That's uh, I I, uh, I I play games. This is kind of like something. Whenever I talk about why I don't, I didn't really enjoy like Doom Eternal or why you know I don't um, I, I don't like to play games that are like super hard. I just, like, I played RE4, the remake, on standard for my first run. And, like, I was completely, like, loaded to the gills with ammo and herbs the entire time. But it's, you know, like, I play the game smart. Like, I play it slow, and if I really screw up an encounter, I start it over and try to do better the second time. And But I just, I like, I like games that allow you to be, like, you're allowed to be good at the game. Like, you're allowed to have an expression of skill. Mm -hmm. um, and... And uh, so playing, you know, playing games that are just like super duper punishing is just like just stresses me out. And I don't play games to be stressed out. I do, and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, uh, I definitely, definitely understand that. That's uh, I was like, I saw somebody in the chat was mentioning the Dead Space remake, and that's uh, Dead Space remake. I actually did not enjoy, um, which is a real shame because I'm a huge fan of the original. But um the the intensity director that they added to the remake completely ruined the game for me it's just like because my like when i play through the original my generally my jam is to pretty much just use the plasma cutter just because i like it it's great and uh and just anytime i have like excess ammo or health it's going into it's going into storage and then i just come back for it later if i need it and try to use like the environment as much as i can and the remake even like encourages you to use the environment you get a lot more of the like javelins and throwable items everywhere um but the intensity director just like makes it so if you've got like two magazines of uh of like plasma rounds on you it's just like not gonna spawn anything anymore 
And so it's just like, it, it really ruins that. There's like no point to playing smart if the game is only going to give you ammo when you're low on it. It makes mm -hmm. more sense to just like blast away all the time. And at one point, uh, like by the end of like the second chapter, I had like, like 200 plasma rounds in reserve, which was great. Obviously that's a lot. But then, like, it got to the point where the game just stopped spawning it for almost like it's like uh, the the chapter where the the hunter, the regenerator guy. Yeah. Up. That entire chapter, I didn't get a single plasma cutter drop. I know you were uh, telling like, me about that. And it's just like, what what is happening? And it's just like, yeah, I don't know. The intensity director really messed the game up for me. It's like they they wanted to like the devs wanted to like force everybody who played it into this like tense scraping by never having enough of anything scenario, and like you should be able to overcome that just by like being good at the game you know like if there's yeah. environmental kills and like the entire purpose of environmental kills is to save ammo but then you balance ammo drops to the point where using environmental kills actually costs you ammo because then it stops spawning then like Shit. you you defeated the purpose of the environmental kills so mm -hmm. i i see that was in, in the i guess that's maybe in a, a, a testament to the uh, intensity director my playthrough is not like that at all. I felt like I was not maybe not really like strapped for ammo, um, but it was certainly like I was something uh, I was being like a little more precious with. But um, I, I don't think I was like once like like out of something I really needed um, in order to get by. So I personally quite enjoyed Dead Space remake. Um, I know a lot of people Dead had like Space stutter is issues. Yeah, it, it's a good game. Like, it, it looks great. It sounds great. It plays great. Um, it's just the intensity director. They really, they I think they they went a little too hard with it, in my opinion. And yeah, I know, like Resident, like you said, Res, like Chrono said, Resident Evil Four has adaptive difficulty as well. Um, but it's not, um, it's not nearly to the level that the intensity director was messing with stuff. I mean, like I, there were entire chapters where all I was getting were credit drops. Like health and ammo would just stop spawning entirely. Mm -hmm. And and having a player go for an entire chapter or more without a single health or ammo pickup is that's insane. <laughs> that's like that's got to be bugged or something. This is nonsense. Okay, let's not die here. Of course, they're all falling in the fucking water. Where are you, shotgun guy? Got him. Yeah, the Dead Space remake was, uh, for the most part, like very faithful to the original and pretty much modernized, like everything that needed to be modernized. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll try it from the beginning again. And this time, I feel like maybe just the the sheer amount of stockpiling I was doing like broke the algorithm for for the adaptive difficulty. Um, it could have. Just, it's like it's like any time when I play the OG, any time I have more than one stack of plasma cutter ammo it just goes into the vault like you just put it away and oh. that's what i was doing here too and it was to the point where i had like almost 200 rounds in reserve um in my vault not on my person and i think like i think that just broke the intensity director like i was having that trouble in resident Evil 4 remake too uh, i was vaulting all of my uh all of my first aid sprays and the game just like stopped spawning health items for me completely mm. uh, and then once i sold all of the because i didn't figure it would count if they were in storage but once I sold all of them from storage, it started spawning again. Ah, oh, man. I think kind of talking about, like, the adaptive difficulty thing. In the original RE4, I think that only, like, applied to enemy AI, too. I don't think it really applied to, like, item drops, did it? Uh, it did. Oh, it did? Um, okay. Yeah, well... There was, the biggest thing was like, I know like handgun ammo is uh, something that like handgun ammo spawns very aggressively until you have like a stack and a half in your inventory. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's, so it's like, it can be like borderline impossible to get like shotgun or TMP drops if you're low on handgun ammo because the game like so aggressively tries to make sure you're stocked up. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and I think like the, I think the drop rate for herbs is also dependent on like difficulty and how much you have in your case. So like if, if you're all if you're like all set on health and ammo, you're pretty much gonna be like only getting money drops. Uh, but I could be wrong about that. The handgun thing is the only thing I'm like for sure on. Yeah, well I know in um the in the in the remake, um on my most recent playthrough on professional, uh I was like 
constantly stocked up on handgun ammo and I had n hardly anything for the other weapons. So I was just using my handgun ammo up a whole bunch and then it was like, well, now it's just giving me more handgun ammo because I don't have yeah. any. Yeah, in the well, I, so I play, like I said, I played on standard, um, but since I was using the Red 9 and maxed it out as soon as possible, and then I was just using the like the bolt thrower as much as possible, so I, I pretty much was constantly full on ammo. Because um, the bolt thrower, once you get like the capacity upgrades on it to the point where you can just like dump 12 bolts into somebody and just like keep them stun locked, it's just like you just use it for everything. Yeah, I'll need to incorporate the bolt thrower into my gameplay because. Um, like I said, after watching Mayo's video um, and hearing more people like talk about it, I was like, I'm obviously just not using this thing correctly, so I need to really... Um... Well, I don't know how good it is on Pro either. You know, on on Standard, it was fine. You know, like, it, it, it was great on Standard. But, well, I... you know, if Pro takes way more shots to kill enemies, then it might be trash on Pro. I have no idea. I, I think it's probably pretty good because um, uh, I started using the Mind Thrower... Um, uh, portion of it and I used it on Salazar during the opening fight like or the opening of the fight I got an insta stun on him with uh with the mine so I was like okay cool and I unloaded like two rounds of my striker and then knifed him uh and, oh uh, yeah yeah the mine thrower uh the bolt thrower if you use bolt mines like you like every single boss is like a complete cakewalk with mine bolts oh it's so you crazy can, like because if you hit him with one bolt it almost like no matter which boss it is it pretty much always like puts them into a state for a melee follow-up and then you can shoot their weak point with a bolt and then jump on them and do both the melee and the explosive. If it, like, they'll both count. Which huh. is crazy. Ooh. Uh, let's see. Colonel is saying the RE4 remake calculates ammo by... It gives you ammo if it's not in the backpack but not the clip of the weapon. But not... So it doesn't mean... Huh? So it doesn't um, take into account the ammo currently in your gun, you're saying? Oh, that was... Uh... Mm. Give time, my favorite. No worries, no worries. I'm re I am really excited to uh, to play RE4 Remake on a fresh save again. Like, playing through... It, I mean, it was really cool playing through it for the first time, because it's like, it's it's RE4, but it's like, everything's kind of fresh again. Mm -hmm. And so, even even though I can, you know, I can beat RE4 blindfolded at this point, basically, it's I was like, playing really cautiously and like, not really knowing what's around the next corner, and that was really cool. But now that's gone because I've played it like four times. <laughs> yeah, no, I um, I I, I want to do a new save too. Um, well, I technically did start a new save, but I kept dying at the village and was getting a little mad. But um, uh, like I want to use my bonus weapons, but at the same time, part of me is like, man, it just feels like cheating if I use the bonus weapons. I haven't um, touched the bonus weapons yet. Are they any good? Oh my god, dude. The Skull Shaker is so good. I really... I, I have a feeling they put it into RE4 because it wasn't in RE3 Remake. Um, like, it should have been. It should have been, a like, weapon parts for it should have been a drop from Nemesis, but it wasn't. Okay. Um, it's fantastic. It feels so good to use, and Leon does the fucking little, like, Terminator reload animation for it. Uh -huh, which they stole from Cold. They did steal that from Cultic, yes. Can't believe it. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, no, I, look, I think the coolest thing for me was that it's it's so compact, like it takes up like a quarter of the space of the of the starting shotgun. Oh yeah. Um, but in my new game plus run, I already had a fully upgraded riot gun, so it was like the the amount of damage that you're conceding to switch to the the skull shaker was a little much. Yeah, I think um, starting on a fresh run is. Uh, um, oh shit! Oh shit! Starting on a fresh run is uh, probably a little more um, doable uh, with it. Although I will say the um, uh, having some money left over um, from the previous run and just selling one of my other weapons, I got it. I fully upgraded it like from the get go. 
Oh, do you get all of the upgrades for it right off the rip? Um, uh, at least on professional, going into a new game. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can even do the the um, exclusive upgrade. Yeah, I, I imagine a pro, a new game plus, pr or a sorry, a fresh. Well, I'm trying to think how much how much it would cost to get the starting handgun all the way upgraded to the uh, the exclusive headshot ability because I feel like that would make a uh, pro run a lot more manageable. Oh yeah, on my uh, first pro run, I stuck with like the default pistol, the Silver Ghost. I don't know what it's actually called in game. Um, yeah. Uh, I stuck with that and upgraded it and do the five time uh, critical hit uh, multiplier is fan fucking tastic. Um, it just like low level Ganado. It just popped their heads left and right. It was ridiculous. Yeah, I, I feel like it's just, it's just kind of weird because, uh, like on pro, you might you you will probably more likely get a critical head splatter before you get a head stun. Like if you're just going for stuns. Uh, yeah, honestly. I'm trying to remember how. I mean, uh, oh, motherfucker, are you serious? Damn it. Ooh, this is rough. Waiting for the stream to catch up. Oh, I see. You got shotgun sniped. Yeah, oh, dude. Ah, dude, that hurt, too. I was at a decent amount of health. Yeah. Oh, man. What are those? I've got the code base pulled up right now. Let's just see what that damage potential is. Uh, it looks like I ate like a good amount of the pellets. Oh yeah, he had a feast. Let's see, shotgun cultist. There's the fire code. Okay, yeah. So there's seven pellets. Um, base damage of five, multiplied by. The damage mod for that difficulty, which you're on extreme plus, that would be what is that? Four times difficult, four times damage. So, twenty damage per pellet, and you, if you got hit by all seven, one hundred and forty damage. Jesus Ooh. Christ! You, that you would be hard pressed to survive that with all the upgrades without any armor. Yeah, that's a big just guy. barely. And that's just from one shot, I assume. Yeah, just just the first. The first barrel blast. Yes, D Phantom. I highly recommend getting Cultic. Oh, I forgot to pick up the. Uh... I've been slacking on. I've been slacking on keys. All right. I have so many extra keys hanging around because. Uh... Of all the makeshift plushies I bought, <laughs> got one key with each of those. <laughs> and so I just got a whole bunch of extras sitting around. Well, much appreciated. I'm sure people in the stream appreciate it also. It's technically I could have, I can just generate more from Steam, but I have these ones. Might as well use them, right? Oh man, you know what I really need to play more of is Spelunky too. I've never played Good. Spelunky. What? Oh, we're gonna, have, yeah, we're gonna have to change that. Have I committed Spelunky's... some mortal sin? Oh, Spelunky's so fun. Of course, I guess Spelunky 1 doesn't have online co-op, though, which is what makes Spelunky 2 really cool. Well, not counting the Frozlunky mod, anyway, which does add net play, but it's it's pretty buggy. I mean, I imagine it's a, it's a modded uh, multiplayer. Yeah. It works. It works okay until it gets out of sync, and once it gets out of sync, it's like everything just kind of cascades and gets worse and worse. But yeah, Spelunky's super duper fun. Actually, honestly, like for the kind of if you uh, if you're the kind of person who really likes punishing games, then Spelunky's like right up your alley because it's like uh, it's one it's and it's one of those games that it's a punishing game that I like because Spelunky is one of those games where there's a really high expression of skill. Like you can get really good at Spelunky, but so much of the game is just like everything is deadly and mistakes are so costly, but mm. it's super fast to just, once you die, you just quick restart and try again. And, uh, you can, you can beat the whole game in like half an hour. If you just do like, if you just survive the whole run, but it's so hard 
Um, but but as you go, it's like every every run you learn something different. Like you learn, oh, that's how that trap works. Okay. Like oh, uh -huh. I didn't know that enemy could do that. Oh, I didn't know that could happen. And then you, know, you just learn and learn and learn. Uh, and then you get to the point where you can beat the game in one run, and then you play it in co-op, and everything changes because now you have a, a turd hanging around you that's that's making life <laughs> difficult. <laughs> It's like, I, it's like I get to the point where I can beat sp the first Spelunky, like most of the time if I play it, I'm going to make it all the way through. But oh. I have I have never beat it in co-op once because like we just, my friend and I just completely get in each other's way constantly. <laughs> and it's it so sounds like fun. one of those games. So is it, are, uh, uh, does like the, are the levels like, um, procedurally generated or are they like yes. pre-made? Okay. So they're, they're procedurally generated and they're also destructible. Oh, um, which is where a lot of the chaos comes from is like stuff blowing up and enemies uh, changing the environment and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, I see. Pre okay. Procedurally generated, um, and uh, there's and it's uh, there's quite a, there's a pretty good amount of tiles, so the games oh, like most runs feel pretty fresh. Spelunky Two has an absurd amount of variety in it. Like I feel like I feel like every run I'm seeing something I've never seen before. Um, it's kind of crazy. Hmm. Well, we'll just have to add that to our ever-growing list of games we still need to play. Denichi says, "Why well, like Cultic if I like if I loved Ultra Kill? Probably not. <laughs> Probably I, they're 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 just totally different <laughs> they're, games. They're very very different. Because Ultra, Ultra Kill is like, um, I mean, it's it's like Devil May Quake, you know? It's it's like yeah, Devil it's May Cry. Kind of, a, kind of a score attack game. Yeah, I'll, yeah." And, uh, Cult uh, Cultic's much more slower paced, um, much more com comparable to like a survival horror sh flavored shooter. Yeah, kind like of thing. Mm -hmm. if you action like good horror. Games, then yeah, you'll love both. <laughs> yes. Oh shit! Uh, that, I did that not was mean to... That was when I was watching uh, when I was watching your Ultra Kill stream um, a couple weeks ago. Um, when when you were playing through the the museum level. Yeah. Um, well, so I talk about how like one of the, when you know, one of the biggest reasons why Cultic isn't like a a B horror like one-liner fest is that i'm just not like a good writer like i don't really have that kind of that kind of comedy it's like looking at the museum it's just it's so crazy because like that never in a million years would i have had the creativity to build a map like that mm -hmm. like the museum and in ultra kill like it's just like it's just not how my brain works and it's so uh, it was it's it's just crazy how different like how different creative minds can be mm -hmm. I, I i agree yeah the the museum is really is really good um it was built by uh, actually um, uh, not one of the devs, but um, somebody in the community who um, is incredibly, incredibly great at making maps. His name is uh, uh, Wizard Man or VV. It's two V's, Wizard. Um, I've never been corrected on how to pronounce his name. Uh, yeah, he built the level with some uh, touch-ups and stuff like that, and it was. It's fantastic, nice. and it acts as the credits for the game. So I, yeah, 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 that's, that's so cool good. Yeah. Uh, so the other thing is, I also, I also work on Cultic by myself. So there's, you know, there's a lot, uh, probably a lot of room for. Uh, I really want to get someday like an SDK put together for it, so people can do community content. But the amount of work that it would take to, to do that is just staggering. Yeah. No. I, because uh, Ultra Kill is building a a level editor and. Um, uh, I'm lucky enough to get to have access to it, um, but it's still in constant development. And you know, every I thought it already had custom maps. Are people just using Unity to make custom maps right uh, now? No. Or... So any like videos you may have seen of like custom maps are like a hundred, almost a hundred percent going to be from the Tundra. It's called, and um, uh, it's it's opening up to like more people as time goes on to kind of gotcha. try things out. But um, there's some really incredibly skilled people. Uh, I know Roby was here earlier. He has access to it too. He makes amazing maps. Nice. Uh, BGB also has it. He was in here earlier. I don't know if he's still in here now. Um, I'm, I'm not a level designer, but I, I think it's really fun. Uh, it's the closest I think I can. <laughs> I think it's the closest I can come to. Uh, oh, fuck. Oh, I'm so fucked. Oh my god. Uh, Chronos, to answer your question, the great minds think alike achievement. You have to kill a ghost with a prop that they're currently manipulating. So it's a very short window to do it. 
And because they, because they're currently manipulating the prop, if you throw it, it will, uh, it will pretty much immediately slow down. So you really have to like slam it in their face. That's kind of a tough one to get. Anything involving like a physics object is a little can be a little finicky. Yeah, I don't think I've gotten that one. Um, I I I can't say when the level editor will release Vlad. Um, all I have heard is that it is not planned to be publicly available um, until sometime after full game release. Let's see if I can get to uh, where I was before, before I have to leave. <laughs> I'm honestly amazed I got to um, uh, Mine Town uh, and then just ate shit right there at the end. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, those uh, those shotgunners especially just, just delete you if you don't have any armor. It's like playing on extreme. It's really fun how uh, like how tense you get when you hear the like armor breaking sound. Mm -hmm. It's like oh god, like every because armor sucks uh, soaks up I think seventy or eighty percent of incoming damage, and so everything just hits like a truck as soon as you lose your armor. Yep. So I know I need to be probably playing a little uh, smarter, but that is not my nature. I will play like a dumbass, and I will suffer the consequences. I think, I think he just kicked something into himself and died. He didn't want to deal with you. He's just like, mm, you know, die by my own hand. <laughs> it's much more honorable. <laughs> oh man, once once your stream is done, I don't, it's gonna be like 3 p.m. over here. I don't know if I'm gonna want to go back to work. Well, especially because especially the next thing I have to work on in Cultic is uh, I have to change the weapon wheel to allow for multiple weapons in the same slot. And that's just going to be a huge pain in the butt. I didn't nice. even think about that. There we go. Yeah, Kelly and I are going to church tonight. Cause it's a uh, Holy Thursday. Is there gonna be some some snacks available? I mean, communion. Is that is that a snack? Is that filling? I mean, not really. <laughs> you have like a you have like your 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 disguise glasses. You can go up a second time and get a second <laughs> little biscuit. Oh my god. Where'd the other pistol guy go? Well, I guess he must have walked on down. Especially because I got my VR headset charged up. I really want to play RE4 VR. I need to get back into VR just as like a little bit of exercise because I spend so much time sitting on my butt. I really need to get oh, a little dude, bit my... of something going on. Yeah, I, uh, gosh, I, I really, I have plans to go back into the gym tomorrow. I love working out. I really do. But like at the same time, I'm like, I'm so sore from the last few days I've been working out. And I don't, I don't want to, but... It's good for me. I wish I loved working out, but I just, I thoroughly hate it. I just thoroughly do not enjoy it anytime I do it. I enjoy, like, going on walks and hikes and, and being active, but just, like, standing still and exercising for the sake of exercising just it destroys my soul. And it makes me dread it, like, all day long. I'm just dreading it. It's, it's so much better when you got somebody to go with you. It really is. Why does not everybody only think of PvP when they hear Ultra Kill multiplayer? Uh, probably because uh, they think that would be really good. But honestly, I think uh, PvP would be really, um, really, uh, you know, it'd be high octane. That's for certain. But um, uh, yeah, I think about it more from the co-op aspect. I'm not much of a PvPer these days. I used to be pretty big into like. Um, Quake 3 Arena back in the day and Team Fortress 2, but I'm not very good at those anymore. Although I did just recently install Quake Champions, so 
because I just see a lot of people playing it now, and I'm like, hmm, that looks kind of fun. I'm getting back into Hunt lately. Oh, I, am, I, I need to I play Hunt. I am, I am really bad at it, but it's so much fun. Yeah, I was gifted Hunt, and I need. I told the guy who gifted it to me, uh, uh, Dr. Feelgood, he goes by here on YouTube. Um, uh, really cool guy. He, he and I have been talking a lot recently. And... Um, uh, yeah, he gifted it to me because we were just talking about it, and it was like ten bucks. And he was like, "Here," and I was like, "Oh shit, I don't have any time to play it, but I will in the future." Story of my life. Story of my life. I could cry. I could cry. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Mr. Harvester, stand in the flames, please. You gonna go see? Uh, you gonna go see the Mario movie after after church? Um, no, but that's an amazing idea. <laughs> I uh, what have reviews on that been like? Uh, uh, my understanding is that it's a pretty typical like Rotten Tomatoes scenario where critics are giving it like a fifty and audiences are giving it like nineties. Yeah. Actually, we'll just let's just see what it's sitting at. I think it looks like fun. I just don't like to go to movies when they open because too many people. Mm -hmm. Let's see. No. Yeah. The Super Mario movie, 54% on the tomatometer, 96% audience score. Oh, wow. I mean, uh, it's the Mario like... movie came out yesterday, I think, didn't it? Yeah. Jesus. Hello. Uh, yeah, Mario movie released at April 5th. Yeah, it's playing in my city all day. Is Quake Champions good? Quake Champions is pretty fun. I'm still not a big fan of, like, the hero power thing. Um, but... Oh, look at that. If you, if you search for the Mario movie on Google, and that brings up, like, Google's little, like, Showtimes thing, uh -huh. uh, there's a little question mark block that you can click on. Oh. And it goes, bing. How many times do I have to click this? Okay. All right. We got all the kills this time, so not bad. Huh, only 15 minutes, guys. Can you believe it? And now I got to wait for... Uh, now I gotta wait for uh, the Across the Spider Verse to come out. That's my next uh, big, June like... June second, yeah. I think. Uh, you're not gonna see Barbie? Come on, man. Oh yeah, I will go see that for sure. It looks really fun. It honestly, it really does. You played uh, both cultic demos and shock that you made second as almost a new level, but. Uh. Just the original, the original Cultic demo map, um, just didn't live up to, like, so Cultic was basically, like, my first experience with doing, like, level design, because, like, all the games I'd worked on before had been, like, really, really small, more, like, arcade -y games that kind of just took place in, like, one scene, or they were roguelites, uh, where I just designed a bunch of small set pieces and let an algorithm, like a dungeon generator, stitch them together. So as I was working on Cultic, every map I made was like my, you know, that was like, was just learning constantly about level design. Um, and so by the time that I got around to making the second demo, the first, the original demo map was very, very outdated in terms of um, just how, how far I had come in level design. And also the, the gameplay of Cultic had shifted a lot more from uh, the original demo was slower paced um, and focused more on like close and close up encounters. And then as Cultic went through development, it started to focus more on like more like medium range encounters. You know, you got weapons that are more accurate at a distance and the, the resolution and the readability of everything increased so that you could actually fight people at a distance and the movement got sped up. And, um, and so just the original map just really didn't fit the gameplay anymore. Um, and also I just didn't think it looked very good. <laughs> so it, I just decided to rebuild it. 
And it was a lot of work. It took forever. It was a very big map. Mm hmm. All the maps are really big, honestly. But yeah, it was uh, it was just, it was just fun building like the open-ended maps. Um, it, it was honestly like really fun going back and forth between like large open-ended segments where the player can kind of pick and choose how they approach everything, and then really dialing things in for like the the spookier set pieces where you're kind of more confined and led on a more linear path. Uh, it's kind of fun. Like the balance between the two means that you know you get these these tighter segments that you that you kind of just pulled through um, and then you also get these slower segments where you just kind of left your own devices and you can do whatever mm -hmm. um, but if it was like if the whole game was like nothing but one or the other back to back i think it would get really tiring but the fact that it switches back and forth i think helps you really keep things fresh yeah, i think like uh, the asylum and um leading up to the asylum are like great examples of that um the uh um, catacombs are wonderful too. Oh god, the catacombs are so good. That was a that was a really fun map to work on. Like just it was kind of just like this, kind of like an I a, a cool idea of, like you're basically playing the map forward and then you play it backwards. But like the conditions of the map have changed on the way back. Mm -hmm. Um, kind of reminds me of like playing Symphony of the Night when you like play through the inverted castle. It's like it's the same, but like the conditions have changed. Yeah. And so like, you know, on the way through, you're basically just like trying to find your way. Um, and then on the way back, you're like fighting, you're like fighting through it on the way back. Because um, it would have been it would have been kind of boring to just like walk through an empty catacomb on the way back. Mm -hmm. um, and there's also all these little hints that like some like you, you see that there's like coffins that are blocking a very obvious pickup. Um, or rooms that are very clearly set up for like gunfights, and it's like, oh crap, something's gonna happen in here. Oh yeah. I hope it's not scary like skeletons. <laughs> Guess what we got? Oh. We got skeletons. <laughs> I say I made those skeletons just for the Halloween update for the cultic demo when I first added survival mode in. Um, oh yeah, and they weren't originally going to be in the campaign, but I was like, man, I've already well, like they're here and they're like fully already, like they're done. So I gotta like find some way to work them into the game. Oh shit. Uh. I just that them walking around with their little their little ammo bags. Make it so much noise. You know, I wanted to ask: Are the are the cultists speaking uh, like Latin? Uh, yes, but it's like um, it's extremely broken. So I basically like did the thing where I like put it through Google Translate like twelve times. You just like like translate it from English to Latin and then back and forth like a whole bunch to the point where it's just like gibberish. Oh, oh, that's cool. So like you could, if you translated what they were saying, you could kind of probably get the gist of what they were trying to say, but it's all like it's extremely garbled up. Because mm -hmm. they're just fucked up little guys. Yeah, because it might have been like originally the line was like was like stop the outsider or something like that but then after you push it back and forth it's just like hello the neighbor <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's not quite the same thing anymore <laughs> <laughs> that's funny yep. but the voices are also it's i mean i voice all the cultists and so but it's just like very heavily modified so you can barely hear what they're saying anyway you mean you don't sound like that in real life uh, oh shit! I do sometimes. Oh shit! He did not get stuck in there like he normally does. I, I like I left my keyboard for a second. I always bring the soap up here for this guy and just demolish him with it. Oh, I didn't even. I did. I guess I missed missed the soap. Yeah, it's down in the down in the showers area. What's really funny is when um when people grab the soap and they bring it with them because they're like, oh, it's it's soap, so it probably does damage because they're used to like you know dust. Mm -hmm. um, which it does, but so they grab it and they bring it with them, and then when they get to the room with the ghost, they wind up like dropping it, and then the ghost picks it up and throws it. At them, oh my which, god! Which also instant kills the player because it deals like five thousand damage. That's hilarious. I've One never seen I've that wanting, before. 
one thing I've been wanting to add into the game um, is being able to take a physics object to the next map with you mm -hmm. um, so that I can make the rescue mission quest or achievement much harder where you have to like take it to the end of the oh, game. Oh yeah, that would be amazing. But that would also mean that you could take soap to the final boss if you wanted. And uh, that would be pretty funny. That would that would make uh, like no out of bounds speed runs pretty interesting, I, I, I think. Yeah. Yeah, um, and I think it'd be, I don't know, because, like, the player automatically drops whatever they're holding when you cross the level finish boundary. Um, yeah. It, like, resets the player's statuses, or it re resets the player's state machine, um, which includes holding something. It mm -hmm. just makes you drop it. Um, so I'd either have to, like, 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 store a reference to whatever the player is holding before they cross that trigger, or just have, like, just, like, check for a physics object that's within, like, two feet of the player or something like that and just but anyway yeah, i think it it'd be kind of fun yeah it's kind of fun to be able to take things to the next level with you ow why didn't you die in the explosion that's kind of funny you won't get to see it uh today because we're just gonna probably die again but um <laughs> the, the, in this in this update, uh, enemies are a little more resilient. Or they're a little more uh, bold in terms of like dropping off of ledges that they don't think the fall will kill them. Mm -hmm. uh, so during the final boss, uh, the enemies don't stay up on those ledges anymore. They'll actually like drop down and attack the player, which is unintended but kind of cool. Oh god, that's that's gonna make it. I think a lot. And in some ways, that's a little easier, but in other ways, it's just so much harder. It can be easier. Uh, because you don't have to snipe them, but it's harder when you don't notice that, like, a shotgun guy has dropped down, and then he just, like, yeah, woo! you know, destroys <gasps> you. Bro. Oh, God, that, that chunked me for damage. That was an interesting little interaction there. Uh, one of the, the top right, if you're, like, facing the final boss, the top right spawn point for enemies, um, the guy that spawns up there, those cultists will kill themselves pretty often, because they do their little, like, check, uh, to see if they'll survive the fall mm -hmm. and they they check the staircase that's like below them and so they think that they'll make it but then they wind up like stepping forward and they miss the staircase and then they just die so oh that's hilarious guys just and it's just like i don't know i could i could spend a whole bunch of time fixing it but it's just so funny when it happens i don't know if it's worth it I think there's another guy here. Ah, oh, this is gonna be tough. Whew. Oh, dear, don't do it. Final boss and max difficulty is true hell. Um yeah 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 abomination is uh i i like them um, the the design of abomination is great and it is a it is a tough fight oh my god i'm gonna eat shit don't do it oh my god we're both just Whew, okay we're both just missing our shots here. Ah, uh, jeez, I need health. Do you need health or do you want health? I need it, dude. Oh, okay. I'm out here dying. Why do they call it a restroom? I'm fighting for my life in here. It's like normally this place is so much more lit up, so I know where to go. I know what to face. I know what I'm facing. If only there were a way to make it a little brighter. No. Ooh, blocky dungeon came out today. What's that about? Uh, an old game dev friend of mine made it. It's um, it's a combination between Tetris and like a dungeon crawler. Oh, that's sick. So it's so it's like it's like the tetronomos instead of just being blocks, they're like chunks of a dungeon. Hmm. Uh, and so you're basically like assembling a dungeon and then playing through it. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, I gotta go back. 
I need to I need to fight. I need to fight cultists. I need to get secrets. I need. I, I need, need to. to fight cultists. <laughs> oh right, I'm not logged into Steam on here. Oh, some armor. Feels a lot better. I really need a game to like officially and like visually and cosmetically show like the Wolfenstein thing where you pick up like 16 helmets worth of body armor and you're just like wearing a stack of helmets. <laughs> <laughs> I need I need that to be a thing. Uh Kronos, you can do either one. I mean, if you just run away, then the zombies will catch up to you eventually, because they'll pathfind across the bridge. Um, but they're all pretty weak. And, uh, like, just a couple headshots will take each one down. Or I usually just go to the drawbridge and grab both of the lanterns that are out in that area, and just set them up roughly where they're going to try to pathfind to me, and then start the crank, and then detonate both lanterns, and then just start throwing TNT, and everyone just pretty much walks through the fire and catches on fire. That's a good way of going about it. Okay. Need to find the spot where the secret is. Oh my god. I'm so what lost. The hell? Hunt just released a, a DLC. That's just like, it's two cosmetics, or two items that people don't use very often. It's ten dollars. Mm. Yeah, I looked at the DLC for Hunt, and it uh, they got a lot of that shit. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. And it's all like rated like very poorly. Very very negative. Yeah, I I mean like they put their DLCs on sale for like eighty percent off, fairly often, and like I've grabbed a couple of them, but like my God, ten dollars for just like a throwing knife skin is a little crazy but I've spent some I've spent some pretty significant money on Fortnite skins in the past so I don't know if I'm one to talk <laughs> I, I am a sucker for I think like when they did when the stormtrooper skin dropped I was like oh absolutely that's pretty much all I use now until, I until until the Isaac Clark one came out and then I exclusively switched to the Isaac Clark skin I would would uh, would like to get the Resident Evil characters Except for maybe Chris. I'm just really sick of Chris. 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 There yeah, we go. Yeah, I saw, I saw the uh, the RE4 remake Leon skin, and he didn't have his jacket. And I was like, I'm not going to buy that. Oh, like, he, it's oh. cool, but, like, no jacket. Also, the fact that the the Isaac Clark skin didn't have the Ishimura as a glider was, like, a gigantic missed opportunity. Really Oh, damn. Fortnite Old dropping Mara, ball. That's because Hunk is the best Resident Evil character in existence. So, yes. I mean, that's understandable. Hunk is awesome. He's a hunk. Okay. I'm out of the mines. Oh, no. What could that be? Perfect. Up blocky dungeon and play it for a couple hours and then leave a review. I gotta do my part. I'm doing my don't, part. Don't purchase it as a gift, purchase it for me, for myself. being really bad at the demo for this game so I fully uh, expect to be bad at the finished product I'm but be like me be bad at all games you play every single one all of them every single one damn I don't know man I'm pretty good at Phasmophobia I really enjoy that game 
Fast is a good time. By the ghosts. You can't get killed by the ghosts if you just hide outside. <laughs> God, I think I die so much in, in Faz. <laughs> I die so much. We need to play that soon. I know. It's so much fun. It really is. I remember I remember I think like the worst jump scare I've ever had in Phasmophobia was the first time you and I played. When I was, yeah. like, I, was I was like running up the stairs and the ghost manifested at the top of the stairs and like bent over backwards, like looking right at me. Mm -hmm. And it was just like completely random that it happened to spawn there, but it was just like the timing was perfect. And I wasn't paying any attention because you and I were probably talking about something stupid and it yeah. just like spawns right in front of me and I was like, Oh my lord, I just dropped a brick. It's all over. Um, breezy. Uh, if you're asking why my name, yeah, my my, my name is Counter Strike Two because my account was hacked and uh, I can't change my name back for at least another week. So, sucks to be me right now. But you know what? I'm just glad I got my account back. Do I have all the? Oh no, no, I'm not at the end yet. I was like, I got all the secrets right, and I forgot about this little part here. Zach, you just need better friends to play Phasmophobia with. I, I would never leave a new player on their own. Because I don't like being left alone in Phasmophobia. Shit. I don't, like, I, I don't like being the only one in the house. We could uh, we could try to get you in on a uh, time that we do Faz together. Um, I know we you're working like a... Though, so. What's that? I said we don't play Faz anymore though, so... I know, because I'm... Because uh, I don't play Faz. It's you and your... You and your college education. <laughs> It'll be done soon. Here's one of my favorite things I did uh, before was boosting myself up in here. And then I realized, like, oh, wait, I can die if I go up there. Oh, I saw a Baron. He got a big quality of life update, too. I need to check that out. I've heard of Barony before, but I've never played it. Uh, it's so, so much fun. Do you play as a Baron? Ha ha ha. Uh, no, you're killing the Baron. That's your goal. Oh. Hot. You know what we should also play co-op sometime is a uh, open RCT, oh, uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon 2's open source mod that has multiplayer. Oh, really? God, it's it's so fun financially screwing each other over. <laughs> it's always great when I'm trying to like like when I play it with my buddy Sai, I'm like I'm I'm like trying to build like some new thrill rides and then I notice that like we're suddenly out of money and I'm like, what the fu and then I look and there's this gigantic roller coaster that didn't used to be there. <laughs> oh my god. I, I haven't so played fun. roller coaster tycoon in eons, it feels like. Yeah, we really try to game the system when we play that. It's just like everything we can do to like cheat people out of their money. Okay, mine town again. Let's go. Oh man, No Man's Sky just got a big update too. Oof. Lord have mercy. Oh shit, oh, I'm on fire. Oh man, you know what else came out today? What? Uh, my MILF stepmom. What? Yeah. What? It's like actually insane how many, how many like porn games come out on Steam on the daily. Not that I have anything against them, I really don't, but it's just, it's insane how many there are. I like, I can't even remember when Steam started doing that, but that uh, everything changed that day. Yeah, it's it's wild. I mean, like even when Cult it came out, I think it was it was like flanked by like three hentai games on either side. And it's just like good. That's good hilarious. Gracious. Yeah, sometimes when I'm going to like look at like uh um you know, like new releases, you know, you'll just be like, oh cool, well, what's this game? Oh, this looks pretty interesting. What's it about? And it's, it's just a hentai game. And you're like, oh. Oh, but it's got pretty good reviews. It says the gameplay is actually good. 
I refuse to believe that there has been a single instance where you've looked at a game and from the title alone didn't know that it was a hentai game. There there have been like a couple of instances where I'm like, this looks interesting. Um, and like I genuinely didn't know because they look like, oh, it looks like, like some kind of indie platformer or whatever. And then, you know, I hover over it. It's just like nudity and sexual content. I'm like, huh. But yes, you're right. For the most part, they're pretty obvious. I'm so su I'm surprised that like because some of the some of the like the the screenshots that are shown when you like hover over the game are explicit. I don't know how that go how that goes through because like on the Steam backend when you're like setting up your product, there's like there's like you have to like check boxes that are like I like I I acknowledge that my screenshots are safe for work like you know that they don't contain mm -hmm. X Y Z. Um, that's crazy. That like I guess maybe Steam just doesn't doesn't check that at all unless somebody complains about it or maybe if your account is um uh 18 or over you know they're probably just like yeah whatever let's be real no nobody is like 18 years old on steam it's everyone's like in their 80s because they just select like the first date that they see on the yeah they they they, uh, other thing. they scroll down born in 1932. everybody's born in january on january 1st 1979 <laughs> yeah. or something like that that would be great if somebody tried to use um, if somebody tried to use age verification results as some kind of like census or like some kind of statistic, and it's like, oh wow, people were like overwhelmingly very horny in like January of 1905. <laughs> hmm, this crowd really likes these kinds of games, huh? Like, how did the hospitals not just shut down? Yeah, on on January 1st, 1901, how did the hospitals not just like shut down? There's so many births. <laughs> I just saw that Outbreak Island is listed as coming soon, and I'm like, I'm like low key hoping that that game crashes and burns. Uh, they were the the Outbreak Island was in the booth, like in the same. They were right next to me at Gamescom. Their yeah. Booth was, and like the devs didn't show up for whatever reason, and so they had like just this random girl who kind of struck me as like like a, like an influencer kind of person. Uh huh. Um, who was like manning the booth like so she didn't show up to like the second day and yeah. so for the entire first day there's like there's like a bunch of just like promo material just like laying on the ground in the area next to me uh -huh. um, and so and so and so it makes it look like our booth like isn't set up or isn't open and so i wound up like like giving it all i like to let somebody at the event know i was like hey these guys aren't here can you like put this stuff in storage so that people stop thinking that our booth is closed um and then this gal like showed up the second day and and I was like, oh, okay, cool, yeah, yeah. Go talk to this person; they know where all the stuff is, and then you, I'll help you set it up. Um, huh. And so, but she didn't know. First of all, the game, the demo for the game was like 50 gigs. Jesus. And and you're having and she's having to download it on like this this laptop on um on like conference center Wi-Fi that's being used by like 200,000 people. Yikes. So it's it, so it's downloading at like you know 500 kilobits per second and it literally takes like all of the second day just to download the demo um because because they didn't they didn't send her with like what they didn't send it with, on like a, a portable hard drive or anything she's just mm -hmm. like having to download it it was crazy that and then, like, sucks so, yeah and so like finally like halfway through the day they get it installed but then like this girl just keeps leaving like she'll be there for like five minutes and then she'll just like leave and and when she is there, she doesn't know anything about the game, like absolutely nothing. Like she didn't, like she they didn't even like give her a brief to read. So people will be like, "Oh, wh what game is this?" And she's like, "Let's like like look at the poster to see what the name of the game is." Oh my god! And, and she's like, "Oh, this is Outbreak Island." And they're like, "Oh, cool, what's it about?" And she's like, "Oh, well, you know, you're on an island, and there's an outbreak." <laughs> and like, poor girl. Know any and and well, she just like didn't care, man. Um, yeah, still. If if you're if the people paying you are just like not putting in any effort, you know why? Well, so so that's the thing is I don't know I don't know like what this situation was like I don't know if those devs just like if they like couldn't make it or if they just like didn't care so the publisher just like was like hired some random influencer from the area to go and like pitch it for them, but the annoying thing was that she kept on leaving so that people would like come up and ask me about the game and I'm like I don't know like I'm trying to be a good guy and be like. Oh yeah, it's like uh, it's it's like a, and I don't know anything about the game either because I've never played it. Mm -hmm. 
I'm like, yeah, it's really cool. Like, I th I'm sure they, I'm sure you can just sit down and try it if you want. But then, like, but then, like, the game, like, she like didn't boot it up after she got it downloaded, and it didn't like work properly on the laptop. Really? So I wound, I so I wound up like popping the game's folder open and like pulling up the any file for it and like figuring out what was wrong, and just like getting the game to boot properly. And I was like, hey, you're welcome. <laughs> it's just, I guess you Damn. can play it now. It's so weird. It's just a weird experience. Wow, I would not have gone that far to help anybody out like that at least as far as like their booth or anything dude the the indie game dev energy was strong at gamescom like there were so many cool people there with and so i was just like like i, I would have taken a bullet for for any of those any of those game developers so that i was trying to be nice i was trying to be like really supportive but by the end of the event i was just like sick and tired of this this gal just like leaving and then people kept on like asking me and I'm like, i don't know like this isn't my game Hmm. Like if if you're not gonna if you're not gonna be here, just pack the booth up and 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 go. <laughs> like, just... Yeah, like you obviously don't feel like your either your game's probably worth it, you know, which that's weird. I I've never even heard of it, so um, yeah. I well, guess Gamescom Gamescom was was awesome, Zach, and that was that was the first time I had ever been to a game convention at all because I just like I don't like flying and I live in the in the middle of nowhere, so like they're you know they're not anywhere near me. And I just didn't have the money to go, but I got I got to go to Gamescom not on my own dime, luckily, because uh, 3D Realms basically sent me. So, and it was awesome. It was it was a, a, a really really great experience. Even though I was like running around like a chicken with my head cut off, because I had like three. There were like there was like a business booth where they were like press would do like interviews about Coltic that I had to be at, and then there was like a public booth that had Coltic playing on a couple of computers that I needed to go check out, and then. I had a booth at the indie arena that I was having to man as well. So I was like running around like crazy. Oh, and, damn. and Gamescom has like procedurally generated hallways, which is really annoying because it's like they, they constantly would like reconfigure like which doors were open and which escalators were closed off whenever like, you know, like if, if one hallway one day was constantly congested, then they would like reroute stuff the next day. And so it's like every single day I'm like having to figure out how the hell to get from one hall to the next one because the hallways keep changing. Uh, it was just like super annoying like probably not a big deal for somebody who's just there one day but for someone who's there for the whole week it's like oh my god it was so dumb but no it was super cool um and it was really neat just like there's like games like uh like uh metal hellsinger was like the game uh that was like really being pushed at gamescom um and so it was kind of cool that like this is a game that's coming out like at the same time cultic is like so it's 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 cool, but it's also like, shit, this is my competition. <laughs> it's like, you know, this I, I have like this tiny little arcade cabinet booth and this, you know, these guys have enough money to literally have like a sponsored metal concert with their game like plastered all over it. And it's like, <laughs> it's really hard to not be like really intimidated by that. So, which is just kind of the tough thing too, is, you know, it's like I, you know, like I wanna, I wanna be really, you know, like all these, like especially indie, like retro shooters, you know, like I'm really good friends with all these indie shooter or retro shooter developers but it's like it's like, i want to be supportive while also recognizing that technically we're all like kind of competing against each other and you, i just try try to think of the like the like two cakes meme instead you know it's like that should be the mindset to have is that you know you're not we're not really directly competing but mm -hmm. it's uh it's it's not so much like wanting to do better than somebody else but like seeing you know like, like i see a game like Salako that's in kind of my same genre and i'm like oh my god that game looks incredible <laughs> it's it's, just, it's so hard to keep like your own morale up when all these other games that look incredible are also coming out i guess it's more it's more competitive in like in that mindset hmm. than then like i want to make sure cultic's the best one it's just like oh god incisions revolver is so good <laughs> how about who's ever gonna buy cultic now <laughs> <laughs> Incision, also, Incisions Revolver is good, but you know what? So is uh, so is uh, basically every gun in Cultic. <laughs> oh yeah, my but God, you, can't, so... you can't spin any of them and pull off a sick, uh, perfectly timed critical shot. Yeah, but um, uh, you downside, also have Did I? The downside of the Revolver and Incision being so good is that it's literally the only weapon I use. I don't touch anything else. Um... I'm trying to think what my favorite weapon uh, outside of the revolver is. Um, the shotgun's really good, um, but it's not really my favorite. I think my favorite would have to be, ooh. Um, hmm. 
Oh god. Uh, oh, I love Kitty. Kitty's great. <laughs> A little, oh, is, uh, that the, is, that, is that the like the creature? Weapon? Yeah, the, the little creature. Yeah, yeah. Um, the alt fire on Kitty is is pretty pretty powerful. I don't even know if I got far enough in incision to. Well, I said incision's hard. <laughs> I suck at it. I'm really bad at it. I guess it's more so hard because it doesn't have a. It doesn't have like quick saving. Oh man, I'm missing a whole bunch of kills. Oh, I know what I missed. I missed the freaking the the sten in the little uh, warehouse. Oh my gosh! What I like, are you thinking? I blew right past that. All right, watch this. Oh dang it! Okay, watch this. There we go. Oh, so loud, so loud. Yeah, no, Gamescom was like, uh, just having so many people come and play the game for the first time was like super useful in terms of like getting, like just like first time player feedback on stuff. Um, especially from people who like aren't super like retro shooter savvy. Um, that was really, really cool. Like, uh, just like little things, like originally the hatchet, uh, the first hatchet you get in the first map it used to be stuck in the stump off to the side and like 80 percent of people would just walk past it even though it was like right there and it's like illuminated by a lantern and it's glowing they would just like run right past it and they would just go beat the shit out of the cultists with their bare hands which was which was fun <laughs> and it works but it's like no like you're supposed to grab the hatchet so that's why now it's it's in the back of a corpse in the middle of the path it's like almost impossible to skip now so it's just like stuff like that you just like don't think about it all um excuse me but it was really cool because like Cultic's meant to be a really accessible game. Like, you know, like it's that's you know it's got um, the combat's very readable and enemies are very predictable and uh, you can kind of play the game however you want and there's easier difficulties and and so seeing people um, at Gamescom who were like you know normally I don't play retro shooters but like this is really fun or like normally I can't play horror games but this is really cool it was really that was that was good feel good feelings hell yeah. I think I missed some zombies. How are you gonna live with yourself? I don't know. I'm, I'm I, oh, I was worried I was gonna like boost kick myself right into the the canyon. <laughs> that would have been embarrassing. Ah, uh, yep, I did forget. Hmm. Oh, yep. Here we go. This is why you don't go too fast if you're going for all kills. But if you gotta go fast, though. Well, it sucks to be me, I guess. Now I gotta go all the way back to the beginning. Right, there's one more. There's one more motherfucker around here. Might as well grab that ammo while I'm at it. Might as well. I'm here, so why not? Otherwise, the cultists will just use it against you. Exactly. God, I love the eerie music that plays here. Boop, 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 boop. That one? Um, it's like the little like drone... Like, ooh, yeah, ooh. yeah, it's really good. I oh tried my to God. sing it, but I think uh, Discord might have eaten it. Hmm. I know. I sometimes miss one that's all the way out over here. There's also a few hanging out in the forest, uh, 
If you didn't get the Sten, did you get that big building full of guys too? Yeah, I did. Oh, there we go. There's the last guy. There we go. Is he going to slap you to death? Probably. Okay, we're we're already making good progress. Good poggers. Good poggers indeed. Oh no! You already made the ammo. And you already made it through the. Uh, already made it through the rock house showdown too. Mm-hmm. That one is a tough one. Uh, that is correct. I also did the music. And unstoppable, unstoppable is a pretty cool track. One of my favorites. I like them all, though, so that's kind of not saying much. Oh, man, I forgot Amnesia Bunker comes out next month, too. Oh, is that the World War One? Yeah. I'm excited for it. I really liked Penumbra when the game had, like, some light combat elements to it, so I'm excited to see the return of light combat elements. I never played Penumbra. It's good. I've heard. The first two are good. I did not enjoy Requiem very much. Yeah, Overture and uh, Black Black Plague. Is the second one Black Plague? I don't know the Steam Library. Penumbra. Yeah, Overture and Black Plague are great. Uh, Requiem was just like it was a little too like uh, a little too obtuse, like too like puzzly for me, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Requiem is a little a little too like abstract and puzzly for my taste. Darkwood, the, uh, is that the, like, top-down one? Darkwood, yeah. That looks Dark really good. I've, it, I've, it's... Never, I've never played Whoa. it. And wouldn't it suck to just completely lose a permadeath run because you fell off a thing? Oh, my God. I lost it. Dude, the shotgun it chunked me so hard. <laughs> Damn. Bad day. Oh, well. Anyways, that's probably where I need to cut off because I need to get ready for church here in a little bit. So, um, those wafers. Got to eat, got to eat them. Uh, so thank you everybody for stopping by. Jason, thank you so much for joining me here today. Maybe, maybe next time I'll do maybe no permadeath so I can actually get through the game. <laughs> yeah, man. Thanks for having me. It was fun. All right. Well, uh, so long, everybody. And, uh, Jason. Bye. Bye. Ha, ha, ha.